Preparation. Y'all know that's why we're here? Making preparation. Malcolm used to sing a song. This is the dressing up room right down here. You got to go to Shamaim from right down here. Well, we know it's not actually going to Shamaim, but Shamaim will come down unto the Ritz. But when that happens, our goal is to make sure that we've already you know, been properly dressed and been clothed upon. Y'all know that? And if so be, he said, we should not be found naked. Naked means I'm without, I don't have. That's the last thing we need to do. Just like an empty lampstand, it's naked. You know, right? There's nothing in it. A lot of times, that's what our goal is. Um, a lot of times, we don't look to try to achieve it, trying to make it sure that we fill this earthen vessel. Y'all all right? Y'all all right? Goodness, I don't know. Y'all look like y'all in a, in a sad state. Let, let, let me tell y'all something. If people wonder why it seems that there's a change, it's actually not a change. It's always been the same thing. It's just a matter of the information that we previously have gone over hadn't changed, nor is it invalid. It's just the fact that um, if you don't have this principal part, the other parts you've got ain't going to work. There's some key things you need in order for you to actually be able to achieve what it is we need. Um, our own economics, our own businesses, uh, our own manufacturing, uh, becoming, uh, as they were called, masters or controllers of our own destiny, as far as being our own government. If you don't have these principal parts, you're going to make a mess. Y'all got me? So please don't think the message has changed. It's just some things that people forget. A lot of times people look at just getting weaponry or getting training or getting a harder, they say, a vogue conversation when there's got to be a real behavior that starts on the inside. See, what he's offering us and what he's asking and what he's allowing us to be able to do through him is of no necessity and no real avail to us if we don't have the principal parts of what we need, the plan of salvation. That's the need why we need it. You're under, really grasping the need of why we need complete separation. Because once you actually start learning what he's always been saying to us, but yet we had a, a blind eye and a deaf ear to it, you'll see the real value. And that's what happened why a lot of times people had done what needed to be done. Because you don't really see the real value in it. You're in a system, and it works for you. The system accepts you. The system diagnoses you. The system gives you their healing medicine. The system... Uh, pre prescribe things for you. The system uh, 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 regulates you. So you don't see a reason to break out the system. My opportunity being here is to show you where the system has failed you. And if you want to know if the system has failed you, look at your state that you're in. The system has failed you. Y'all got me? That's why we're here. Please, sir. Thank you so kindly. Good to see you. Um, look at Yeshayahu. Uh, let me see if it's 38 and 1 is what I want. I encourage people, if something's not working for you, do something different. If this ain't it for you, go somewhere else. Anybody. That's, what, that's the good thing about life. You always got that opportunity. You can do something else. Isn't that right? Even if it's wrong. But as for me in my house, my belt, we're going to serve you. Y'all hear me? That's the truth. I was telling my wife today, we was talking about uh, some other people we know, and she was telling me about she had seen me, talking about how the kids had gone off and just the different ways they had gone and done. I said, mine took some straight too, but we stayed on them to keep them here. It's a battle. It's a battle. You do all you can to try to keep them and do what you got to do. And if your hope is that what you've done will avail to put something in their heart, that it'll become something that they'll desire and not something you just got to make them get up and do. But you don't ever give that up, though. You don't ever relinquish and give it in a child's mind or a child's ability or thought process to decide for themselves. A child always going to make the wrong decision. Take a small child and tell them to go in there and put their clothes on what they want to wear. The shoes ain't going to match the shirt. The shirt had nothing to do with the pants. They probably won't even wear drawers, let alone but that's a child's mind. But to a child, it looks good because that's their thought process, and that's what you will look at with us. He's giving us the ability to say, well, you go and do it your way. See what'll happen. And later on, you'll realize something. You need to come back and see me. Now I'll dress you. Y'all got it? Okay. 
Listen, let's look at this. Yes, Yahoo 38 and 1. Listen. In those Yamim, those, in those days, was Hezekiah sick unto death. Y'all hear that? He was sick unto death. And what happened? Yashayahu the Naba, the Ben of Amus, came unto him and said unto him, What did he say? Thus saith Yahuwah, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. He told him to just quit and give up. Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Now, what's our mindset typically if we find out we were gravely ill or sick? Quit. To come to it. He's exactly right. That's, 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 that's the total mindset of the average of us. If I feel like I'm losing my mind, well, I ain't going to fight it. Let my mind just go. So come to it and just go. Versus, I got to make sure I stay inside of the, the realms or the ramifications of the Dabarin to where it's going to avail me something. When the book teaches us in the book of Romans in the 8th chapter, I think it's about the 28th verse. See, that's what I want, Romans 8, 28. I'll say that what I want. Listen. And we know. Uh-oh, that hold on for a minute. We guessing what? And we know. And we know. That all things work together for Ta'ub to them that love Allahim. And? To them who are, who are the called according to his purpose. You hear that? So now if we know that, then it's because we're going to be able to uh, recall, going back to the records, and seeing where these things avail something for us. The first time when we see things from the Christian antics in is always failure, giving up, stopping, I knew I wasn't going to be saved. We always counted to those things. When these things come, these adversity, they come for us to consider. Again, we talked about on last night. In order for me to consider, i got to have a couple of options. I can't go to a car lot and the man show me a car and say, well, consider this one. Against what? Do you have anything else I can look at? Something else I can compare? What's the gas mileage on this one versus that one? What's the longevity of this car against that one? How much does, what's the cost involved? How much is the maintenance? Now I got some options. You got me? So when we sit down and we say that we know, you're talking to people that's going to have something. At the fifth chapter of the book of Romans, five and one. Knowing is knowledge, agreed? Knowledge, by definition, is a range of information. This is the fifth chapter of the book of Romans. Romans 5 and 1. Listen. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have Those shalom. of us in here. In the fourth chapter, he talked about somebody, Abraham, who is also considered a call the father, Abba, of circumcision. But he's regularly, he's, he's basically known for us by the father of faith. Simply because he believed it was accounted to him to righteousness, Sadiq. When we go back to recall that, and Shaul was able to bring that back to recollection because a lot of time, even with other camps we have, a lot of their claim to fame is the circumcision. Now the camps going to tell you about the circumcision. But when we went back to look at the records concerning Abraham, he asked when he was called, was he in circumcision or out of circumcision? He was out of circumcision. He let us know that circumcision was given to him because of, you got me? He didn't achieve anything by circumcision. What he achieved allowed him to get the sign or the token of circumcision, of which we carry today. Y'all hear me? But if you don't have the faith, then we look at, he said, now what you've done is now your circumcision has just became uncircumcised. Huh? Because that's a removing. Y'all got me? The same thing that we learned when we looked at Yahusha, the, the same things we should learn about him is faith and removing of things. Getting rid of things. Even in his death, he was able to get away his own mother. Most of us, we're trying to struggle to hold on to so many things that ain't even trying to grab and hold us. And there's really no value in it. You got me? He, he proved himself by removing everything. But in order to do that, sometimes you have to be put in a state. You got me? He said, therefore, being justified. Because we go back, that's how Abraham is justified by faith. Even when he was going to slay his only son, of whom he was told... It was going to be the promise. This is going to be the 
a promise. He believed Elohim so much that he was willing to sin without question, without reservation. He moved. The book say move with fear. Fear is good to a point. Fear is bad when it keeps you that you fear not doing his will. The fear should be there that you should fear if you don't do it, what would happen to you. But some of us fear of people in crowds, and that's our problem. We fear people watching me, what people saying about me. He watch you, what he's saying about you. That's what's going to send you to hell. He didn't leave that in our hand to the judge to decide where you're going. It's in his hand. But a lot of times, because he's invisible to us, at the time, we don't see that. You're looking at the things that you clearly see. And that a lot of time becomes your problem. Listen. Therefore, being justified by faith. Listen what happened. We have shalom with Allahim. See, that's how we're going to get peace with him. Being justified by our faith. We talked about it being invisible, but yet being clearly seen by your actions, by your reaction. When, the, when he afflicts you with something, what should be your reaction? Consider. See, this is all a part of your faith. He afflicted me with something. I don't know what's going on. I just, I just quit. I don't know. I, just, I ain't even trying to think about it. So you're not justified. Let's see. Listen. Through our Malak, Yahushua HaMashiach. What happened? By whom also we have access by faith we into this about grace. The access, which again going to be the dollar because we talk about the door, swinging door. Isn't that right? So this is our access. This is how important it is for us to have him. He's access. If someone will ask what's the need or purpose, because there's an entrance. Isn't that right? And, and he, cause, so an entrance was ministered unto us. When we look at him, we was given an entrance, which is access to him. If you ain't got access, you're done. Listen. Into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of Allahim. Listen. And not only so. But what happened? But we glory in tribulations also. Y'all hear that? We glory in who? Tribulations also. Tell them why, son. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Now you tell me, how many of y'all in here when you're going through tribulation, you glory? My hand not up either. So what are we lacking? The mindset of experience of, of realizing. If you're going through something, it's only for a purpose. It's to yield a purpose. But being in the flesh, it's more easy to succumb to it and just give it the glory, give it the give it. Give it something that's not even worthy of having and not seeking him. The only reason he would afflict us anything that happen is to draw you closer to him. So at that point, we'll look, now if it were to my salvation. Let's say he gave me counsel. I won't use hypothetical because a lot of times we'll say, oh, listen, because it ain't real. Let's talk about things being real. Everybody in here got something. Everybody in here has AIDS. You have cancer. You have diabetes. You have high blood pressure. You have kidney failure. You have heart failure. You have blindness. You have deafness. You have a heart problem. Everybody here, you just can't see it. There's a person that controls it. There's a person that allows these things to happen, okay? There's a person that allows you just don't see it. And you've been good because somebody that can't see told you you don't have it. Somebody who used a machine to go and look inside your body, and they're still not going to see what you see. Because they can't even see between the joint and the marrow. And you know what, though? None of the machines allow them to see. The intent of the heart. So, and therefore, they're still blind. They're still, technology still lacks something. What technology is trying to catch up on, and they even trying to figure out now, and they, in, with the criminal world, they're trying to figure out how to try to uh, do thought on, on, on um, prejudgment on thought crimes, or, or trying to catch people for thinking. They got to like the minority report. You remember that? They were trying to hit that Tom Cruise movie. That's where they want to be at. They want to try to do everything that Yahuwah does. That's the whole purpose of them making the x-ray machine. Because he told you, all of him don't see, look at the outside. He look at the inside of a man. So he made a machine to try to make himself to be almost equivalent. And you who know he'll try to copy. But because his people knew, that's why the book told it, if it were possible, they would see the very less. Huh? Those that are called according to his purpose. See, everything he has, they try to mimic. That's been their whole purpose the whole time they've been here. That's why they try to change up a man or a woman and transgender. Whatever they do, they want to do everything they seem to do. They want to try to be the creator man. Science has been trying all his life to do what Elohim does, and it's just natural for him. I mean, it's just one of those things he does, one of the many. You got me? But then he said, I can make him perfect. And even you could create one that got to the point of ability to do, which is going to be artificial. I don't care how much intelligence. They can make a man create a man robot, give it this skin, and make it almost look human. And even they had to say that intelligence is artificial. Huh? Can register map, can read, spell, define, and they got to still say it's artificial. Hmm? 
Even though a man gave it that information. Your who will make it, and it can't count as fast or whatever, and that's just intelligence. See, so we get into a point of trying to make sure we're created right. And the only way it's going to happen is we got to come back to look at the information. To make a real perfect man, it's going to take us to come right back here and make sure that we got a grasp, a comprehension of what it is he's trying to get us to achieve. He said, but not only so, now us being justified, this is consolation. You're talking to people that know the law who understand the value of circumcision. In the third chapter of the book of Romans, he asked you then, he said, about circumcision. How they pray? He said, every way. He said, rush, because to them we deliver the lively oracles. We got the lively oracles. But we're coming back and looking at something. We don't want to just put this on our flesh. And a lot of times, I've been guilty of so many of we put it on our color scheme, which no man has an opportunity, a chance to pick. Nobody came out and picked pecan, tan, dark, black, Light skin, mixed mel mulatto, you were given. Nobody picked and you were given. The only thing you've been having an opportunity to do that's of your ability is to choose who you're going to serve. With everything you couldn't pick, whether it was a wide nose, skinny nose, a big behind, little behind, big breast, small breast, no breast, you have no choice in that. But you can choose who you're going to serve. Now you finally got something you could be responsible for. All of the stuff you've been going through your life, I, I, would, I wish my hair was, I would have liked lighter eyes. With all this you couldn't change, he gave you something you could change, your present day situation. And it's simply in making a choice, but you can't make that choice without proper information. And that's what we're trying to make sure we get. With proper information given to people and convincing. You got me? People got to be convinced. That's the purpose of letting you see, and we've gone back and I ridicule their system so bad. Because I need you to actually see what works. Their system has failed them. Then we got to come to a system that won't fail. He said, now, not only so, but we glory in. Tribulations also. Also mean what? As well. What else happened? Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Mm. What is it going to do? It teaches me to take my time. It's going to teach me to wait before I give out. Wait before I quit. Wait before I say it won't happen. It can't be done. Wait. That's what it taught me. All the tribulation that come upon me has allowed me to get to a systematic point of looking at, let me just wait before I just give up. Before I just call it quit and start down. Let me just say. At the book teaching in the book of Kahala, let us hear the conclusion. How many times we made prejudgment based on not having all the information? I assume when you said, but you didn't let me finish. And that's what he's trying to tell us now. We have been guilty about, we have been guilty of making improper decisions because we hadn't heard the conclusion of the whole matter, which was to fear, keep his, what obligation it is? This your whole duty. The only reason I should be taking care of my family and providing for my family because that's part of his commandment. Not because it's just some in me. That's the problem. Some in me that ought to drive me further. Every, people always show some attribute. You got some men, they'll just fight to protect their family. They won't do everything they're supposed to do, commandment why, but you'll have some instinctive things that's in you. Those practices. But with practice, he wants to get first and to really try to make sure there's value to us here, the instinct that make you hit a double ring. That's a lot of stuff people do that's just instinctively. But where's your instinct when it comes down to your obedience to the double ring? Y'all got to stand up. Some of y'all are already asleep. And, and I tell you, oh, yeah, they, it's, they've been asleep. A bunch of few of them in here, they've gone. They, they stopped on me. But, but the whole problem that come here, I really want us to look at our state. You don't need to die and leave here and go to hell. Now, you can take this for a light thing as you want to, but I'm telling you, if you go to hell and you're hearing this, I hope you go. I hope you stay. I hope you burn for evidence increased on you. Because we got a great opportunity. I'm just being honest. We have a great opportunity, and we're a people that's in a grave danger. All the stuff he allowed to happen to us and why things happen, because had it gone any other way, you wouldn't hear it. It's taking your state that you're in now to make you listen. Hmm? A lot of us, if things change and gone any other way, you couldn't hear this. Sometimes situations allow you to hear. Huh? Being captive allow you to be put in a situation that you consider. It's a lot of things I had to draw and pull a man or a woman. And you can go and do a whole lot of things. But if you don't get salvation, you're in trouble. 
Don't you let a couple of sunrises and raindrops come and determine your attitude. You know how many of us in here, a pretty day makes us feel good, a rainy day already gloomy, don't go out, something's going to happen? Who told you this? Who told you this? Because they regulate your behavior. You watch them, they tell you a forecast already when you already planning a Sunday. Sunday said it's going to be cloudy, rainy, pouring down, casting down snow, and it's going to be so, I already don't do nothing, don't plan. But we ain't look to see what the Yahuwah say. Because everybody wants to be in his state. Everybody wants to be able to predict. Y'all got me? He determines. No matter what anybody says, he determines. You got an opportunity to make sure before you leave him, whether it's me or you, whoever, whoever leaves first, or several of you, make sure you're right. That's the only thing I want to make sure on my end. I don't want to come back, it's on my end, and you didn't get it right. If he gave me counsel right now, a lot of it come up, because it's in your body. You eating enough of these people poison, where it's sitting there. It just sat back dormant. At the right time, it can activate. Okay, you don't have to believe it. Go ahead and, tell, go ahead and believe what you want to believe. It's just a family trait. It's just in your gene, but ain't nothing else in your gene. You let these people tell you whatever lie they want to tell you. You eat, of course it's in your gene, because you've been eating the same thing. Isn't that right? You've been eating, whatever. You don't, naturally, you don't get the same thing they got. I grew up, my mother and father had diabetes, they're both diabetics, and we, I ate the same food they ate, so I already got a diabetic trait. And it caused my parents, because we've been poisoned with the same food. The parents get the same food they eat to the kids, pretty much. Isn't that right? They ain't buying two sets of groceries. At one point, he said, him, he said, he eat what I eat. He said, let the nigga hit Fred Ward. Let the nigga perish. I had Fred Ward. He hated when she would cook something. Else. He said, let the nigga perish. He ate pig ear, pig tail. Nigga don't even let the nigga perish. Lima bean. Nigga perish. Yeah, man, got so bad all that cornbread. I want some syrup with it. Something to make it just do something different. But now we come back to look at, if he gave it to me, it was simply be because he would want me to consider. Him just say him giving me cancer, allowing that cancer cell to, to come up and become um, prim prominent in my body. And it become to a point that there's something gravely ill. It's irreversible. And I'm not going to make it. I only have so much time to live. The first human reaction is the, the, the sob in the fact that I got it. The second human emotion is to try to set and worry myself on the fact that now they just gave me a time factor, a time stamp on when I'm gonna die. How many people ride out and been in accidents, a gunshot that didn't have the cells that had become prominent in their body? How many people? You know how many people die in car wrecks, train wreck, plane wreck, and, and none of these diseases were uh, um, known or identified in their body? But see how, the, how they work? The first thing they do is to go into depression, submit to it, succumb to it. And when you start to let that mind work, your mind can become real dangerous. You'd be surprised what you can factor in your mind. You can factor so much failure in your mind, it's automatic you're going to fail. And you know what you're going to say? I knew it. I just made it because I believed in my mind so hard, and I succumbed to what people have given me into the depression or the state of myself, so now it has come along and it has defeated me. Instead of me looking at it, I went, and he said, you have cancer. It's terminal and you have approximately three to six months at best, I got an opportunity to do what? Try to make my election show with you who. You know how I many the people that don't hear that that realize this? It ain't me. It ain't me. But your time is still determined by you who. I'm saying it to say when people give you something, a lot of times we don't see the graces and things for the mere fact. He will only give me that because he's trying to turn me. He's trying to gather my attention while I can look, human nature, look at this. All these people, why they don't have it? Well, I got to die with it. Everybody that died don't have to have cancer, AIDS, diabetes, high blood pressure. You die because it's been appointed. And a lot of times what we've done is we become so in our mind to believe if we get a, what they call a good bill of health from these people, we're good and you're not good. Because your time is still factored and determined by Yahuwah. If he allowed this to happen, it's only for me to get myself to consider. Sometimes we go, you don't consider that something happened. Man, you sitting in class, you've been playing, messing around, you ain't turned a couple of paperwork, then they come in with midterm. You sit here, you like, 
Oh, blank. I've been here playing. My behind about to fail. All right, gay, you, you look around like how you know what you need to do then, right? This is before you get the final grade. This is what he do. Before you get the judgment, I've been giving you midterm. You know what bad? First thing, I got teasing him. When they kid fail, come cuss you out. What you ain't been doing? You been picking. I know you don't like my kid. I can tell you how you. Did you get them in? What? If had you been looking at their paper, what paper? Why you? Because typically you're supposed to send some home to let them know because they set the system. So it don't make sense at the end of the because somebody's saying, why did I know? It's just like you who? Why would I just fail you and not tell you in the beginning? And sometimes you get them kids. Kids will come and half tell you stuff. And then when you sit there and half tell, they go and tell their parent. And the parent come that jacked all up, swole up, ready to fight, fit to cut, go to jail. And the kid and half told you some information. When you sit down, you feel the blanks in. You feel like, now you feel like a fool. And the same thing with us. When you kick it up and say what you can't do, go back and look at your midterm. What were you told before? You were good. What did you get midterm? Let's just go back and look. Some parent was, my wife, she would save my kids' papers. They have a paper their brain was an A or whatever. She would save them. So if anything come up, she can come back and say, now if you fail, I just want to go back over these papers and figure out where, did, where does F come from? How did D, because I'm looking at these papers that have been coming home. This is what they've been getting. Now we can go back and find out, was there an error? Y'all got me? And we talk about with the record. That's the whole purpose of what Yahuwah did. When he seen what was going on with us, did y'all know he saw that should be a book of remembrance? He knew that needed to be a book. I need to remember because I forgot that time you had did such and such and such and such. And pull that grade up. Because sometimes some people say, I don't need to write that. I mean, let's just, for the record. For the record, let's just go ahead and make sure we document. Y'all do know that's what he made sure. So this is why we're coming back now and we're trying to look at the record. You've been told during your midterm you were failing. So when you get the final exam and your final grade comes up and you failed and you got an H, which is, which is hell, huh? You already knew what you were doing. So now, periodically, he allows some things to come in. And this is your opportunity now to do this as some extra assignment to pull your grade up. Let's try to get from the present day state we in. And a lot of times we don't put that effort in. Listen. I can keep flowing and going on a whole lot of information. Y'all hear me? Y'all know why we ain't touched this and a lot of stuff I told y'all I'm going to deal with. Why? I'm being honest with you. We ain't ready to govern ourselves. We're not ready to police ourselves. We're not ready to, to operate our own businesses. Because our heart ain't right. There's a lot of key principal things we missing. Because in my assumption, in my assuming, I thought we would be ready for this. But being honest, we really not. Because we failed in this. All things where we really need to make sure we have, what good is it going to be for us, as he said, to gain the whole risk and lose our soul? What are we going to gain if we lose our life? If we sit here and we gather all this stuff up and then we come up and we don't have the proper plan of salvation, what is it going to yield us? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And I'll fail you. I would have failed you as a leader. I'll fail you as a leader. To sit here and know that you sit here and you ain't where you need to be, and then we're going to put our move. Well, what we need to be doing, we're behind. We are behind. And now we sit back going over things. These are elementary things we need to be doing. Knowing that tribulation, glory in tribulation. It's got to work because I know that all things work together for the good. How many of y'all look at that? Some of y'all can't even focus, can't think, can't get. I ain't where I need to be. I just. You know where I can spend most of that time at? Getting where I need to be. By the time I keep sitting around talking about where I ain't need to be and I ain't who I need to be, that's about the lamest conversation. I don't even hear a conversation. I, told, I was just telling the ministers to them. I, some of y'all grew. I'm, I'm going to break your groups up. Some of y'all grew. Y'all just poor. Just poor as hell. Just poor. You couldn't make it with me. I can't listen to them conversation. Why are you not where you need to be? That's crazy. If a mob been said, that's why I got to get that's our goal. That's our goal. You know what players will do in NBA? They'll get these guys a contract. We'll wonder why. It's based upon an average of at least, at least per game. That might seem easy. That's a lot of work. Tell them. That's a lot of work. You know what you got to do to try to make sure you do that in order so you can try to get that contract? Well, Yahuwah got some that he set a level for us too. Blameless. They call it perfect. And because people hear perfect, what's the, what's the known say? What's the known? Ain't nobody perfect. They didn't call me nobody. Tell them to call you nobody. Change your name. 
change your name. Because all purpose is, all perfect is saying is, uh-oh, y'all finna be in trouble. Is that how you spell it? That's it? All right, well, let me write it better. That's how you do it. This is what you typically do. This is how you do it. This is what you typically do. Yeah, just, blameless. <laughs> That's it. That's that L-E-E. -E. That's all they're blameless. That's what we're trying to get, blameless. So get your, all you got to do is when fault is being distributed, it ain't yours. Huh? That's all it is. The guilty person is the person that stole this pen. Who in here stole it? Who in here didn't steal it? Guess what you are? Blameless. Which means you kept, your way, you kept yourself away from it because it didn't belong to you. This will make you guilty. A law has been already imputed that said not to steal. You see what I'm saying? Now you start setting your mindset to do that. What are the laws? But what we come at, we'll blame. We good? I need y'all. That's it. <laughs> All right, make sure another L don't need to come up down. I put L, Y, blame fully. So listen, <laughs> now this is what we're looking at. All we have to do is make sure that we properly digest or, 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 or comprehend the commandments, the law, the statute. Then we make sure we don't violate them. This makes us blameless, or should I say, perfect. Let me finish this up. We'll move on. Uh, finish that Roman, the fifth chapter, and we'll come back over. I don't know. They're going to hang in here with me today. I don't know about y'all. What y'all want? Y'all need to hear ass damn in hell again. I want to make sure we get blamed. Someone said, let's roll. I know. Everybody got different appetites. My views will go down. But everything do exactly what it's supposed to do. My anger had not changed toward their system and what they've done. It's just a matter of looking at we're not going to be effective if we, don't have the, if we don't actually grasp the plan of salvation. Because a lot of things we hear, and I, I know because I sat down and I know the mindset and the intellect, you hear it, but is it really possible? Everything that you read in the Bible is almost fictitious. It is. It's almost fictional. Because you can't see it actually happening for you. And the reason why you can't, because you can implement it. When you take what the books, that's why he told you about patience. All these things are supposed to yield something for you. These things don't just happen overnight. That's why you're going to have to have patience. Listen. And patience experience. See, now, with this patience, I've got, I got an experience. So guess what? When another situation come up of similar, guess what? I've been here before. I've been here before. That patience and constantly doing what, just using an analogy even with, um, let's say, even with the Super Bowl they just had. Falcons coming right out, doing real well, just using it. What they did lack and what hurt you, and a lot of people don't realize what people mess up at, people will go with regular season numbers sometimes. Regular season numbers are not always what you want to use because you got to look at when you start reaching playoff and start going at championship, now you start dealing with experience. A lot of people crack. That's a lot of pressure. This is somewhere I hadn't been. And when I start getting here, this is where, this is where experience pays off consistency, telling them stayed the course, they kept doing what they need to do, and even the fact that they gave out of gas. They didn't have experience doing that. They've been here, what, the page been there seven times. So they've experienced loss doing it, but we've experienced more wins. One thing a good coach tells them, said, listen, don't crack. Don't let that boy get you. We got this much time. If we just stay with what we practice to do, we can still win. See, what the average person did, people got up and left the stairs and left their third quarter. Because, you know what, and you know why people did that typically? Because it's just like you do. Once something happened to you, let's just be honest. It's over. There's no way they can turn around. It's, and then what we do, God, I can't believe they did. You know why you make statements like that? Because you can't believe you're going to make it. I can't believe we did it. I never thought we would have won. People that talk like that. Or the same people that fail where they need. 
I ain't working. I ain't going to tell you I can't believe I'm going to be saved. Experience. I'm going back to look at people that follow a certain pathway. I'm going back to look at people that made it, that, that were approved by him. Let me say, we all still waiting on the final judgment. But we know these people were approved, like Abraham. Now, these people ain't in the grave. You know what I'm saying? Maybe, hopefully. These people died in the faith. You only just get it, you got to die with it. It's got to be something you're getting, something you keep. Y'all got me? So now I go back to look at if these are men, when I pray and then I'm told to, when the other men that came before me, when they would call upon him, they would always ask him to remember them. Which comes along again to validate that these men were renowned. These men were known. These are men he acknowledged. He acknowledged them. Why? Because they did what he told them. Let's look at something. Oh, finish that right quick. Run, um, they give me um, about a sheet, 17 and 1. Get them some coffee they need it. I'm going to put the time in. Somebody want to be saved. Y'all saying I'm mocked for the coffee or I'm mocked? Y'all be I don't need for. See, you don't check behind these folks. Somebody don't have both. I know you. They said, I heard it. I'm out of mind. I got you. Like a man told me, I know your kind. But that's all right. I just want to make sure we get it. That's all I want to do. At the end of the day, if we get it, y'all got it? I'm talking about really get it and don't let it go. I don't want this to be one of them situations where, because we're going we gonna to transition. This transition is the, the congregation of the Most High going to take the king. They ain't going to give me nothing. I'm taking it. Please don't think any way I don't soften down. Y'all hear me? We're going to take it. But we can't get it until we first possess what we got to have, which is the Ruach. That congregation that's going to take it is going to have something. The Ruach, y'all got me? If you don't have the Ruach, don't you go try to take nothing because you're not going to keep it. Y'all got me? So once we get in position, then he can start moving. Y'all got me? Once we get where we need to be, then things can start to come into play for us. But when we're sitting here, we're lacking some real things that are simplistic. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. Listen. And experience hope. And what happens, son? And hope maketh not ashamed. Y'all hear that? Should never be ashamed of your hope. Y'all hear me? Should never be ashamed. What is that, right quick? Timothy? Do, do, do. First Timothy. Is it First Timothy 1 12? Might be second to that. First Timothy. Let me see what I want. Listen. And I think the Mashiach. Second Yahu Timothy. 112. Second Timothy. Make it make it second Timothy 2 and 10. Mm-hmm. I'm good. Second Timothy. 1 and 10. Listen. But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Yahushua HaMashiach, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to Aura through the Amat. Y'all hear that? He abolished. We talked about, about saying, he told them in the garden that the day they eat of the tree, surely die. So he's abolished death. We're talking about life living death. I'm talking about life, living, death that you don't ever live again. He came and he abolished that for us. He didn't take away the fact that you're going to die. And we would call the state at this point sleep. That we which are alive should not prevent them which are what? Sleep. Y'all see the difference when it comes down to a person that being of the congregation versus a sinner. Sinners die. The only time they'll wake back up is get the final judgment so they can just burn in hell. Y'all got me? But for when you're talking about the congregation, for his people, y'all hear me? Then we're talking about sleep which is a temporary state of unconsciousness. Okay, listen. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. What happened? For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. Uh-oh. He said also we glory in tribulation. Y'all hear that? He said which also I suffer these things. Tell him what happened, son. 
for I know whom I have believed uh -huh. and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that union. Did you say a shame? He just said, I know I'm, I'm not, I know. For the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless, I am not ashamed. Thank you. For I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that you. Now, when we look at that, this is what we look at. A lot of times, this is what happened for us. Uh, when different things happen, we're afraid to let our family know. Because if they find out, then they're going to ridicule us. They ridicule us, then we're going to be embarrassed. We're embarrassed because we're ashamed. Y'all got me? It's just best sometimes don't let them know. If you got something going on, you're going through something. It's just best to make sure you keep everything in-house and keep it secretive. Because if they know, then they're going to use that against you to criticize you. Then which means you hadn't learned how to properly grasp the concept of how he worked. Because he said, not only, not only so, but we glory in tribulation. Because only he give me tribulation is to give me the patience. That patience is going to give me experience. That experience is going to yield me hope. I ain't got no reason to be ashamed. I ain't done nothing. I ain't got no reason. But this, I mean, that's how, I know, like, just to say what I told with my wife, when that happened with my wife. Come on, you know, nobody want nobody to know that. Kind. I mean, you don't want people to know no stuff. Like, what are they going to say? It's you. People going to blame you. When anything happens, they're going to blame you. I remember one time I saw they talk, you know what they told me? So, you know, I had never had an issue with it. They said, it's that religion. They said, it's your religion. Oh, I got personal. I swung. Not with hands. I hit a nigga dead in the nut soul with it. I, I went personal. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. I ain't going to tell what I said, but I went real personal. I went real. I dug deep. I clawed in a nigga hard. Oh, that was help. Man, I'm sitting here and they all hit me with that stuff. They said, they said, oh, yeah, they said, that's what it is. We talking, trying to figure what we were going to do and everything. They said, yeah, they said, yeah, it's your religion. They said, finally got to him, broke her down. I swung. Yeah. Can't be repaired. I hit. That's how you had to do. You had to swing. You had to hit. But you had to come back to looking at I didn't stay. The, I stayed the course. Uh, I didn't stop what I was teaching or preaching. I didn't stop doing what I was doing. It became questionable even to me, but I had to show I wasn't ashamed. You got I me? Mean? Sometimes he'll let things be aired out before people. Much as we try to keep stuff private, things will come up. You know when it comes along the love show? You can't be ashamed in what you believe. And a lot of times, when we're put down to the measure, we'll fail. We'll fail because we're going to try to show so they don't say, or we're going to try to hide so they don't see, and it comes in to show something. I'm not ashamed because he said, for which cause? He said, look at my position. He said, for which I am a teacher of the Gentiles. Huh? He said, and an apostle. He said, I suffer for that now. I suffer for that. But nevertheless, I'm not ashamed. He said, because I know in whom I believe. And I'm persuaded, which means I've been convinced. You're not changing my mind. We can have this conversation, but you ain't changing my mind. And because I got something committed against that day. Y'all got me on that? I need us to really get this because we're bad about failing. How many of y'all feel around your family? Come on, Belinda, number one. Some more of y'all in here. When I said fail, we kind of change up. We don't want to be so into what we do so they don't think we're so drastic or so extreme or we want to try to compromise in a sense where we still can hold our way but don't look to be because they come in and we do different. This, I say that to say to everybody here, include me all of us, that's the human part of us. We are here so we can try to make that human man die. That natural man, because he's not subject, that natural man is going to look at where he can manipulate. How he going to be able to counter Cut corners on the ends and still kind of be in regulation, but you're not. This, this is for everybody in here. The purpose of him doing this is for the fact of you should know me by now. You should know him enough to where if he did this, it's working for a cause. Just like with EU. Let me just see something. 
Your kids and your daughters just been killed. All your stuff gone. And you you had everything. And man, everybody loved your kid now. Woo, man, your kid. And all of a sudden now his kids say they did. And all your cows gone. And your house done burnt down. You know that church and stuff you go to. Now you think about it, why you you were only thinking to yourself, why would y'all ridicule me now? I wish, as a saying of figure of speech, and people say, not wish, but I would desire that you guys never had known that happened. Because you're going to ridicule me. But you know what? This is only happening, so this is going to prove out whether or not you're persuaded, though, in what you're doing. Or you're going to let that and some people talking move you from what you believe. How did it work out for him at the end? Duff. Wouldn't have did that had he turned. He did like some of us did. Move some stuff around, put a couple of Jesus pictures up. So the folk be comfortable. You know what I'm saying? Put some stuff out there other folk like do something. That way people say, oh, okay, he humbled down. No, I understand that I'm being afflicted for a reason. But it definitely ain't because I'm no transgressor. I got something laid up. It's because of what I believe because I'm afflicted. That's what Shaul said. He said, you know what I do for a living, right? You, do you know what I do for a living? Then I'm going to suffer for that. Well, that's what he's trying to get you. If you're going to name the name of Yahushua, then you're going to have to depart from what? From iniquity, which means you're going to suffer for that now. Who finna let you just walk up and walk away from sin? Huh? Yeah, people still got stuff on some of us in here. People don't want to let you just leave. Now you got to suffer. And when that suffering comes, it's to see whether or not you still willing to stand on what you say you believe. And I just, I need to, some of y'all go home. Some of y'all just look at, I really want us to grasp this, to make sure we really get this. Because we are so quick to believe in something happening all the time. It's because it's to destroy us and tell, it's to show us where we lack. From being blameless. We didn't pay attention. The man told us what happened. Look what I do for a living. I got to suffer that. You going to name the name of Yahushua? Shaul just told y'all last night in the fourth chapter that he said, who also a prisoner of Yahuwah. Y'all remember that? What did he want you to do? You going to suffer for that. Y'all think people finna let you just waltz in here with that little head rag, that rag on your head and that dress and everybody got on pants, hair cut like a needle baker, line up, earrings and lipstick, and you ain't finna suffer that. You know you're finna suffer for that, right? But you gotta be like Shaul. We call I'm not ashamed. Because I know in whom I believe, and I'm persuaded now, here to keep that which I got committed. Tell them that's the only way you got your hair wrapped. But you need to take it off so you can fit in, folks, because they ain't a sin. See, y'all all y'all all got too many different stuff y'all give in. I know y'all can. I know everyone, I know every one of my members here. Y'all so big trying to feel these people, and you show you are ashamed. And you know what he said? If you be ashamed of me. I'm going to be ashamed of you. You can't ever be no more ashamed than I am of you. It's, it's impossible. He said, before the, the folks you are ashamed of me for, they all sinners. How are you ashamed of me for some sinners? These people are transgressors. But if I could just fit in, if I can just have both on, I said, have your cake and eat it too, which I don't understand that. Why would I have cake? I can't eat it. I don't know. Who got cake? I don't know what that means. If I got cake, why I ain't eating it? I got the cake. Well, no, I ain't going to eat it. Well, someone let me get it. Why you let me eat it? No, I don't want my cake, too. Well, let me, you won't eat it. No. Well, it don't matter. I'm confused. Have your cake and eat it, too. This is, I mean, some of you, you know, we recite stuff like, so you want to have your cake? I hope to. If I don't die first, there's no poison in it. Why did I get it? Look how, how many of y'all been guilty of saying uh, here in the, you see, it's fables. It don't even make sense if you think about it. Right. Have, it's your cake, and you're going to eat it too. Who's supposed to eat it? Right. You want your cornbread. <laughs> Isn't that right? Yeah, you want your, that name, you be clipping your toenails and stuff. Yeah, you keep, no, 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 you keep your cornbread. That's your cake. <laughs> I got to watch them. <laughs> let, 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 let's look at something, and, and we're going we gonna to get back. We, we talked about over here again. We know that all things work together for him. 
for them, them, plural, not just him, that love you who are called according to his purpose. The call didn't mean you heard and you came, right? He talked about before, when I called, what did he say they do? They didn't answer. So it don't work for that. He said that a call according to his purpose. If you called according to his purpose, that means you came. You got me? Now you're going to look at, and we, and we talked about how being justified by faith, which meaning what we learn in the law is what we stand upon. These become the principles of which we stand. That's how your faith is justified. Because faith come by, hearing by. So now we hear the word, and we become doers of the word. We start to manufacture, produce what we've learned. Now, you can say this, I'm justified by faith. Now I got peace with it. Now we made peace with it. Y'all got me? Now we made peace with it. Y'all got me? This is what, so you look at the book teaching us in the book of Yeshayahu in the 57th chapter in verse 17. Pick me up right quick. And we're we'll, we going to get back over here too. Fifty-seven, seventeen. Look, I'll put, this is me. As long as y'all able to hear it, I'll give it to you. I, 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 I'm 100% I'm, 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 I'm sure if we take it just like he said it, we get in. If we all to a fault to frame it, we're in trouble. He, he's cleaned up a lot of stuff for it because what I told you guys before was right on our taking over, ruling, establishing, having, breaking ourselves away. But it don't make sense when we hadn't completed the first principal thing we need to do. Making sure you grasp and you contain the Ruach HaKadosh. He's not putting it in the vessel. He told, I'm not putting it in the old vessel. I'm not putting it in the old bottle. I'm not going to do it. It's going to be in new bottles. Which means now we got we to remanufacture ourselves. We're right back to the principle of being born again. Y'all hear me? Got to be born again. Y'all hear me? Same thing he did with the wrist. When he came along with the water, he destroyed it. And he kept certain things, put them aside, and he didn't let them out until it was purified. Y'all got me? Two things you to purify. He can use water, and he can use fire. Next time he come through, he purifying it with fire. Y'all all right? Okay. Y'all can mess around. But he ain't putting nothing out here until it's been purified. That's why he kept them, and he put them shit until I, I got to make sure everything is being killed out before I let it out. Before I put it inside the wrist, he had to make sure it's got to be purified. Y'all got me? So now we're looking at, if you really want to be saved, you're really trying to dwell in him, you understand we got to be purified. Which means you got to get a real grasp for the, for the Sadiq of faith. Which means what you hear, you got to stand on it. Y'all don't believe it. Y'all hear it and you read it, recite it, and say it. But you ain't walking in it. That's dangerous. When you get it, you got to walk in it. Listen. For the iniquity of his covetousness was I wroth. That's why I was angry. What happened, son? And smote him. And I smote him. That's why I struck him. Why y'all think they hit him? They were angry with him. Huh? Listen. I Man, I told you he was the son of Allahim. So you think he's just yours? You don't think he's my father too? I'll slap your teeth out your mouth. They were upset. The man, they, when they brought it, what did he say? He said, we all the sons of Allahim. They told you, he said that's who he was. You know that? So what that make us, the devil? Why do you think they were angry when they hit him? I can't even believe he said that. So who are we supposed to be? He keeps saying he the son of Allahim. And you know what made them angry? Because what he said and what he did was different than what they were doing. Come on, man. Come on, man. It wasn't just a statement. Come on, man. We already knew that we were. Come, do y'all do y'all really grasp this? When the man sent Musha into Mizraim, he said, Yashra all is my firstborn. Let my, my son go. Let my being go. That would be at that time they're looking at his people. The congregation as one man, my son, my being. You got me? So now we're the children of those people. Therefore, we are the sons of Allahim. But this man keep coming on the scene, and he keeps saying that he's the son of Allahim, and he does things different than we're doing. So now, I'm trying to figure, so you keep saying, and I know that you don't do what we do. So what are you saying about us? He didn't have to tell them nothing. It's just a matter of fact, they was able to see. You do things different than us. So you're saying we're not. 
You don't even read. Nowhere we hear the argument where somebody says, nigga, I'm the son of Elohim. People know. This is why it don't make sense for us to succumb to them in their conversation that we're going to yield and come down to them. This is what Nakum y'all tried to tell me in the sixth chapter. He said, I'm doing great work. Why does I leave it? Why should I leave it to come down to you? Why am I going to take off a scarf? Why am I going to put a split in? Why am I going to rent go with you somewhere ain't got no business going? When I'm doing a great work. What my people do? Come straight down. They ain't got to ask them. Hell, they build a pole and slide down like a fireman. Can't wait to get there. Like, oh, we were just in the call. I could feel it. I was already ready. This is why we have got to look at what we're doing because our souls are on the line. I hid me and was wroth, and he went on forwardly in the way of his heart. What happened? I have seen his ways and will heal him. Listen. I will lead him also and restore comforts unto him and to his mourners. What happened? I create the fruit of the lips. Yeah. Shalom, shalom to him that is far off, and to him that is near, saith Yahuwah. Yeah. And I will heal him. But the wicked are like the troubled sea. When? When he cannot rest. With the what? Whose maim cast up mire and dirt. Y'all hear what happened? Y'all know what he was talking about? Who know what he was talking about? When well, he was on the two and they gave him the arm, the arm, the arm. Now that's a good answer if this in time. Pick me up if you would at the uh, book of Matiyahu. Matiyahu 27. Somebody say we sleep. You'll just keep hollering that wrong answer? How long you think you how long you think y'all keep doing that? Or the preacher turned around and said, that ain't it. Now, that's all right. Now, it's good to challenge yourself. 27, let's see if it's 38. Listen. Then. Matayahu, 27, 38. Listen. Then were there two thieves crucified with him. Well. One on the right hand. And. Another on the left. Listen, what else happened? They that passed by reviled him, and did what? wagging their heads, and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple, and what happened? buildest it in three yamin. Y'all see what they answer? He built in three yamin. Do what? Save thyself. Listen what happened. If thou be the Ben of Allahim. See, they ain't say all of Ben of Allahim. They looked at it. See, his speech only had power because of behavior. Your speech don't have no power because you ain't got no behavior. That's why they laugh at you. Because they know you ain't got no behavior to go with what you said. Why anyone talking about all of us? Why we don't read what everybody kept coming up saying they were the sons of Ali? Why we don't read that? They knew that looked stupid. They knew, and they're gonna put you in a situation. This is what they're gonna do. Now, why you think he would put out him? First of all, he was a teacher of the Gentiles, as well as to the Yahudim, and an apostle. For which cause? Why y'all think I'm suffering? Huh? But nevertheless, I'm not ashamed, because I know in whom I believe. And all of that, he was persuaded. He was able to keep that which he had committed against that union. Why was he suffering that? Because he was a sinner? Because his mother and his father had sinned. See, you don't really look at him the way you're supposed to. Why would this man, this is straight ridicule in front of everybody. Then they write it where everybody can read it. The thing was written in Arbery, in Latin, and in Greek. To make sure everybody knew about your shame, the shame that we're trying to put on you. This is a total mess. And a de- How do you think he felt? Being a man. Being found in the fashion of a man. How do you think he felt? They, these people just took your clothes off right here in front of everybody. How do you think he felt? But nevertheless, I'm not ashamed. Because I know in whom I believe. I'm persuaded. I'm not moving. Because I got something committed against that union. See, I know one day Tony Smith is going to stop breathing. One day Tony Smith's eyes ain't going to open no more. One day. One day, I got to have something laid up. That's your mindset. What do you got laid up? What? I got life insurance. I got health insurance. I got accidental policy. It pays double that happened. What's your policy like with Yahuwah? You, you know why I'm here today? I'm an agent. All I want to do is I want to go over your policy. And just make sure you got enough in the time that something should happen. Because you know what some people do when they get insurance? When I first got married, I got an insurance policy for 
$25,000. That's beautiful. No kids. We just got married. We stay with my parents. My dad is something like $25,000. Why don't I have any kids? Time to get ready to go. Got to get my own place. I'm going to need a little more insurance than that. I had to move up and get $75,000. Another kid was coming. Then another kid was coming. Obligations changed, which means guess what I had to do? I had to increase my insurance. Now I got about three or four policies to make sure I got enough in the time and when that happened. What kind of sense it make to sit and look and consider all that and hand consider about what kind of policy I got on this man right here? All those policies that I put, that I set up for, were for the people when I leave. I'd be a fool not to get a policy for myself. So I had to talk to an agent. I had to get with an agent. Typically what an agent want to know, sometimes you'll sit down and say what you want to get. A good agent will sit down and want to just say, first of all, what are you trying to do? What's your, what's your, you trying to, because I mean, they want to know. Sometimes, like for blacks, typically we just got insurance. First we got it to bury, because you didn't want to leave a bill. Then learn we later, later we learn to get and try to have a little something left over so people ain't stuck with some of your bills. But now you can take insurance and you can set insurance up for now. You know, so we also have like annuities with insurance. We got insurance got so many options they've always had for whites, but you just learned about them. You can set up with insurance to where you can get a retirement with insurance. You got insurance that can come back and pay you back your premium with interest. You got insurance that can come back and then they have value, which means in a time of a need, you can go back and you can pull from that policy, and the policy still has an effect. I had to talk with an agent. I had to talk with an agent. I need to know about that. Because so many times we walked around and did, as Mickey all talked about, scant measure. You put that in your song, talk about the scant measure. Barely sufficient. We've been bad about it. I know the old people. How many of y'all opened a $3,000 policy? Old people, if you had a $1,500, that was it. They, and they, all that pretty much went in the ground. Bad open, they just looked at it. They pretty much put that in the ground. Folk weren't trying to live off you. And you left the family just in a hurl of mess. People just learned to just go on. Just gone on. You took a, a Bible part was taken out, and then the family left stunned and hurt that it gone. And there's no money there. That's the same thing that we look at when it comes down to salvation. You got to get something that, well, if you live long enough and something happens, you know what I learned I can do with the policy I got with you? I can go and I can draw from it. Hmm? I can go and I can draw from it. And guess what? It still got the same effect. I ain't took nothing away from it. Man, that's a good policy. And then when I get old, I found it can still pay. And you know what I think I found about it? It still ain't lost no value. He ain't going to come up and say, you know what, you can't be saved. Because like some insurance, people don't set them up right, and every time you withdraw, you took it away from the value. The one I got, the value's still good. No matter how many times I go back and draw, you know the only thing I had to make sure of there? Them premium paid on time. That's all I got to do. Make sure when I pull to be him, I'm him. Make sure all my obligations are met. He can't deny me that policy. When it come time, I go to bring that, I can bring me the policy. He's like, I can't deny it. It's just like they did when you who's head going there. They said, a notable work been done. You know what they said? And we cannot even deny it. The man policy in effect. You know why you get no benefit? You done had some lap. Mm-hmm. I can tell you right now, they want to call me and want to know what's wrong with their policy. For, for sure, agents don't come in and talk a lot. You talk I'm more like on the top real easy. Cause they make sure you got it. You missed a couple of payments. Now, what we can do is we can reinstate. But you know what the reinstate to do? They ain't going to believe this. You got to catch up all that behind. Ain't no reinstatement with just pay this month, but you missed five months. Do you know in order to reinstate, you got to come back and get all that you missed and become current. And sometimes they're going to put you on another plan and say, you know what, at this point, for safety measures, let's just go ahead and put you on automatic. Hmm? Because we done left it in your hand and you tend to send stuff out late. Check, but. <laughs> that's the one you're talking about. 
Y'all done cast it? Talking about the check you sent. But what? Yeah, we cashed it. But now we're going to put you on automatic draw so I can go in and make sure you got it. Make sure you current. Make sure things are done. That's what I'm doing now. I'm trying to make sure your policy is staying in effect. Making sure you stay current. Because you can't come and draw and get nothing from it when you ain't up to, when you ain't up to date. The average is here way behind. And you trying to come in and ask for something to happen, to ask for something to kick in, and just going to kick in. If you ain't got it now, you ain't going to have it. I also had got some advice from somebody about a policy. Amazing. This policy, would, he go and get it. He's supposed to go and get this policy the other week. This policy is going to go back and pay back for when his wife had a baby, back pay him all that time. I said, I was like, yeah, I'm Yahoo. I said, you who said? I said, I'm not. Get it. I said, anything you can go get now that'll go back and retro pay you way back then, but come to find out some misinformation. Another preacher had informed me. <laughs> not this pastor, a bishop. Because yeah. somebody else had did it. And see, when you come to find out, and you, this is what you find out what a benefit of insurance pays, what had actually happened with the person. They had the policy and didn't realize that it would pay them. When they found out, they was able to go back and get that money and get that money even today. That's the good thing about Yahoo. Because there's some things sometimes you might forget and might not be well of. It'll still pay. That's the one thing about it. He don't say you don't pass the time. He's not unfaithful to forget your labor love. Some insurance, even though it's in your pocket, you don't know, they ain't going to tell you. Some people don't know. A lot of people don't even know they got dismemberment in there. A lot of older people, they'll get a leg amputated or lose their sight. They, get, oh, they don't know. A lot of insurances cover that. But if you don't know and you didn't file it, that's the thing about you. He always keep an agent on hand. You can come and talk with me and find out. Let's go over your policy. You'll be surprised what your policy cover. Most people don't even answer the call. Hey, I'm such and such. You're sure, hey, you're trying to get what you Trying to go with your pot. One, to make sure you got enough. If not, let's get you where you need to be in case something happens. What? That's what I'm doing here as an agent today. Making sure you cover and you where you need to be. Because you're going to get a situation. Most times people get it. They can make humor, make fun. They start looking at other stuff they committed to and saying, I'm going to probably do my taxes. I'm, if you're going to get insurance, you get your taxes, don't get it. Because after you blow that, then you're going to mess up. Because typically what's going to happen you sick and you don't really feel that sick where you need to keep paying that policy and you're going to drop it or cash it in and you're going to go and get some more later on. I know some of you here. I already know you. Because you don't consider it's going to be an instant going to come up you're going to need it. That's when we look at Yahoo. Because ain't nothing going on with you today. It's going to be an instant. Something's going to happen. And you need to know your policy where you know you can go back in and you can draw. I need to be able to go back to my policy and go back to my He's my policy holder. I go back to him. He's the person that's going to pay. Y'all got me? I can only have to go see the agent out there. I can go straight to the person that redeems the policy, and I can get me some action out of the help. Y'all got me? But you're sitting in a situation where you can't get no help. You're not caring. You didn't get that in your policy. You just wanted the scant measure. The barely sufficient. Then you're wondering why there's no change. That don't resolve. Why you can't obtain. Why you can't get. I'm losing y'all you got to use all these natural um, analogies to get us to really grasp the importance of when you're who will pay. Insurance, you know when insurance is really valuable? When people die. I've seen a lot of policies where some people had them and they dropped them just before they died. Mm. Put them in their time. Man, they supposed to have something. you like, you're finna be straight. Straight where you were broke. I had a member went to go see somebody that died, and when they went to see him, they were going to get what they pulled ahead. It cost them more money to go find out they didn't have it. They should have went with my mind and left them right where they were. Because the person that pulled the head, it looked at, hey, I don't need it. I got some other stuff I got to do. And that's what people do with salvation because we become so committed to other people, other obligations, to other things. You don't think you need it, but you don't realize it's going to be a day you're going to need to come here and you're going to need to draw from their policy. Now, we're going over it now. You need to look at, if you don't have what we're saying you should have here, you need to get it. Why you be ashamed? Because you ain't got nothing. What's going to make me not ashamed? 
the fact I got something over you. I know something you don't know. If I don't know it, then you just embarrass me. You just shame me, but you don't know. I look like I'm the one naked. I say you naked. When they stripped you who were clothes off, they didn't know he wasn't naked. They were. What you think keep me from being embarrassed? Because while you thinking I'm the fool, little do you know you the fool. Let's finish that map to y'all up. Listen. If thou be the Ben of Allahim. And the other one, you don't give me Kazum. Listen what he's going to tell them. Kazum 3, 17. Listen, if thou be the son of who? Allahim. Tell him to do what? Come down from the tooth. And what happened? Likewise also the Rosh Kohan, mocking him with the scribes and elders said, he saved others, himself he cannot save. This is what y'all miss. Listen. If he be the Malak of Yasharal, do what? Let him now come down from the tooth. And what happened? We will believe him. Listen what has happened. He trusted in Allahim. What happened? Let him deliver him now. What happened? If he will have him. Tell him what he said. I am the Ben of Allahim. Look at that. That's how folk keep bringing your statement. This is where folk get you. Where your, where your little church? I ain't church some synagogue. Where they at now? Where your humor? What his name is? Your hooky? What's his name? Where he at now? You claim you want to hear. When they going to look at when, when, when you think these people going to use this on you? When they look at you, they, they look at your worst estate. That when they gonna, now they're going to pick, they're going to make fun. This is what they do. They, they just show you how son will pay attention to what you've been saying. Ain't like everywhere he went, son of Elohim, son of Elohim, son of Elohim, son of Elohim. He had to tell them that. They knew. Word get out. Tell that with your family. Word get out. People know more about you what you know. Folks, you ain't seen nobody. about you. You just don't know they know about you. How you been doing? I just want to see if you lie. Your family already told me how you doing. You the talk of the family. Y'all don't know no better. I had to, I had to let y'all do stuff because y'all so done dumb, you just don't know no better. You actually think your family folk come and ask you how you doing, and they don't know. They already know. I just want to see if you lie. Because when I get back, I'm going to tell them, you should have heard them over that line, talking about they doing good. I know they ain't in that cult. They just let you, people just, you know your family. Let me, let me say that. Somebody come to you, any of y'all got anybody in y'all family that smoke dope? They probably to a reunion, you might go and ask them how they doing. And you ain't talk. You just sit here watching them, and you're going to get right back to the mother, and you're going to let them know. You know that crackhead head nerd to claim they were doing such and such. Am I lying? You already know how they're doing because you've been told, hey, you, and some of you don't see them so you can tell them, and other folk been telling you in the family. Now, you think your family done swapped up on you? You don't get no pass. My family do the same thing. That's how I know. That's the hypocrisy of them. Yeah, they ain't going to tell me, ask me how I'm doing, like they know. I already knew you know. What they told you. That's how y'all tell them. What they been saying. How they say I've been doing. Who said, what? Let me get some more ice. <laughs> Both in the go. You don't mess them up. They already know how you doing. You the talk of the family. You ask your thing. Listen, people in your family gather up against you. This was your whole family here. They gathered against them. My, my, only my people here can be that dumb. You ask that these folks in your face. Ask them, look at you thinking, you're doing well. They just plan on And when they got through, everybody went back over what you said. They told me something, said, said, lies all together. All of them tightened down and twisted up everything you done said. They just want to say, I see one of them crack just saying, the other one going to get together and say, that crackhead had nerve child like they ain't smoking dope. You just want to get the stuff so you can just see how far they going to go. And that's the same thing they do. You think something changed with you? The same thing going with you. They done played you because you the crackhead now the family. The crackhead who was of the family ain't even crackhead. No, you the crackhead. You said, oh, somebody smoke crack, they don't, yeah, <laughs> they point at you. You the crackhead. Listen. The thieves also. Uh oh, pay attention. The who? Thieves also. The who? Thieves also. The who? Thieves also. I can't imagine what they did. Which were crucified with him. Did what? Cast the same in his teeth. He told you who Mayim cast up mirror and dirt. They were throwing at him. The book told you we were crucified with him. Who you thought they were crucified with? Just the two that was on the side of him? He said we were buried with him in baptism. How you buried him in baptism you didn't die with him? Y'all miss it. That's y yes, Yahoo tried to tell you that. Who, Mayim, he was talking about the people. They cast up mine. They were casting up dirt at him. Throwing rocks at him. 
He said it was just like the trouble. See, they couldn't rest. He just told you, the rocks go hard. Everybody, they couldn't rest. It's like they just couldn't stop. He said it was like the trouble. See, when they cannot rest. And you know what he said? Ain't no rest, said my all to the wicked. These waters right here, they ain't going to never rest. You know you going to put them? In hell, where the fire ain't quit and where the maggots don't die. But they missed it. Kazum, let's show you why he won the same. 3 and 17. Listen. 17. 3, 17. Because thou sayest, I am rich. Pay attention, because thou sayest, I am rich. And increase with goods. Yeah. And have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched. Pay attention. You and think they knew that? He told you the thieves also that were cast the same, were cast, that were crucified with him. They didn't even know they were wretched. Listen to what else happened. And miserable. And they didn't even know they were miserable. And poor. And poor. And, and this is what, what really shot them in the foot. And blind. And what else? And naked. Them people didn't even know they were naked. Do you know that? Mm -hmm. Ooh, Allah Shemut. See if it's 32 and 1. Let me see that what I want. Finish that up right quick, Brandon. And he finna give me ooh, all our shamut so I can go ahead and draw cards on. Listen. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Listen, why? That thou mayest be rich. And do why? And white raiment. And what happened? That thou mayest be clothed. And what happened? And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. Y'all pay attention to that? That the shame of thy nakedness didn't appear. All right, ooh, all our shamut. 32 and 1. Listen. And when the people saw that Musha delayed to come down out of the mount. Y'all see what happened? They saw he delayed to come down out of the mount. What happened? The people gathered themselves together unto Aharun and said unto him. Do what? Up, make us gods. Yeah. Which shall go before us. For as for this Musha, the Anus. The Anus that brought us up out of the land of Mizraim. What happened? We what not what has become of him. We don't know what has happened to him. Come on. And Aharun said unto them. Do what? Break off the golden earrings which are in your ears, which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. Listen. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aharun. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a molten calf, and they said, These be thy gods, O Yasharal, which brought thee up out of the land of Mizraim. Listen. And when Aharun saw it, he built an altar before it, and Aharun made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to Yahuwah. Uh -huh. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought shalom offerings, and the people sat down to eat and to drink. And rose up to play. What happened? And Yahuwah said unto Musha, What happened? Go, get thee down, for thy people, which thou broughtest out of the land of Mizraim, have corrupted themselves. What happened? They have turned aside quickly out of the way which what? I commanded them. Yeah. They have made them a molten calf and have worshipped it. Come on. And have sacrificed thereunto and said, These be thy gods, O Yasharal, which have brought thee up out of the land of Mizraim. What happened? And Yahuwah said unto Musha, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Yeah. Now, therefore, let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them, mm -hmm. and that I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation. Come on. And Musha besought Yahuwah his Allahim, and said, Yahuwah, why doth thy wrath wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Mizraim with great power and with a mighty hand? See that? You hear that black man? Yahuwah told him to get him down, him and his people. You saw he just casually just throwed them back on him. That black man right there, boy. We're trying to get ourselves being incriminated. He said, you know what? Your people, which you brought out of Ms. Ryan, that's like they black. We easy right back over there on him. He easy like, isn't that right? Your, your people, which you brought up out of Ms. Ryan, real easy like, come on. Wherefore should the Ms. Ryan speak and say, for mischief did he bring them out? to slay them into mountains, and to consume them from the panim of the Aritz. Turn from thy fierce wrath, and repent of this evil against thy people. They will not seem to relent, not to do it to them. Listen. Remember Abraham, Yasakut, 
and Yasharal, thy servants. See why he had to call? Look at the names. He had to get back to him. Because these are the men he swore the covenant, swore the oath to. He knowing exactly who you need to look at, who he's going to remember. He's going to remember that covenant. He's not, he's the all of him that keep his covenant with thousands. Y'all hear me? From generation to generation, he was able to call him back to that covenant. If nothing else, let me bring him back to the covenant. Remember Abraham. Remember Yasaku. Remember your cold. Listen. To whom thou swearest by thine own self and saidest unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of Shamayim, and all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. And Yahuwah repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. Now, don't it make sense when I pray to you them? He done thought to sit here and destroy this whole nation of people because of their transgression. Yet Moshe was able to call him back to say what the Mizraim was going to say. People looking, you done got this victory, this great glory, and that's going to come up. If nothing else, what about Abraham, Yasaku, Yakov, who you say you're going to multiply their descendants? What about you say you're going to give them the land? And the books say he repented himself of it. Why would you not use them? Why would you not look back at these men? Because he swore oath to these men. Even though they're dead and gone, it's still in effect. Do you not know he said the law, which came 400 some years after we were given them, could not disannul that promise? Although at that point, these people had put themselves in a situation where they should die. That promise held that much power that he was able to go back and withdraw. Let me go back and check the other policy I got. Sometimes you get more than one policy. If this policy here don't get it, let me go to this other policy. It should cover it. The policy with Abraham, Yasaku, and Yaakov, the book said repent it. Let's see what else happened. Listen. And Musha turned and went down from the mount, and the two tables of the testimony were in his hand. The tables were written on both their sides, on the one side, and... On the other were they written, and the tables were the work of Alahim, and the writing was the writing of Alahim graven upon the tables. Listen. And when Yahusha heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said unto Musha, There is a noise of war in the camp. And he said, It is not the voice of them that shout for mastery, Neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome, yeah. but the noise of them that sing do I hear. Now, what's important about that, Shaul told y'all about that. He said, except to rule and give a distinct sound, how shall one know to prepare himself to battle? Now, when this crowd went out, Yahushua heard it, he thought that they had been down and they was in war. Well, Shaul was able to clearly pick it up and know exactly what they did. He said, not them that was sitting down and rejoicing and going making noise because they had gotten the mastery over somebody had gotten the victory, nor was it the noise of somebody that had been overcome by people that had been mastered. He said, but these are people down here that are committing folly. That's why he learned us about sounds. You got to be able to pick up sounds, behaviors. Listen, sometimes some stuff y'all do ain't what you say. Your behavior gives off sounds. Listen. And it came to pass. What happened? As soon as he came nigh to the camp, wow. that he saw the calf and the dancing, and Musha's anger waxed hot. Listen. And he cast the tables out of his hands and brake them beneath the mount. And he took the calf which they had made and burnt it in the fire and ground it to powder and Listen. strawed it upon the Maim and made the children of Yahshua drink of it. Listen. And Musha said unto Aharun, Listen what he said. What did this people unto thee? that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them. Listen what happened. Aharun said, Let not the anger of my Moloch wax hot. Thou knowest the people that they are set on mischief. Yeah. For they said unto me, Make us gods which should go before us. For as for this Musha, the Anus that brought us up out of the land of Mizraim, we wot not what has become of him. Listen. And I said unto them, Whosoever hath any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it me, then I cast it into the fire, and there came out this calf. Listen. And when Musha saw that the people were naked for uh -oh. Aharun. Uh-oh. And when Musha saw what? That the people were naked. We had to read all that just so you can get it. That's what he told you in Kazum. You say you rich. You say you got it, and you don't even know you poor, you wretched, you blind, and you naked. While the people thought they had stripped him, they didn't even realize they were naked. 
That's why you needed the counselor. You needed somebody to come. That's what he saw. We talked about last night. He told you the need of having a counselor. He said, I counseled him. So you need some counsel because you don't even know you're naked. Wow. Well, our dominant was in the garden. They told him. He asked them why they hid themselves. He asked them to, didn't he? Who told you? Who told you you were naked? You weren't even supposed to know. So I sent a counselor among you. Somebody to let you know you're naked. You see the importance of why you need a counselor? He saw that. Ain't no counselor. Nobody to tell him. When he saw that, that's why he looked at There's nobody to let these people know. You do know you're naked. You clearly seen, and you thinking your behavior is invisible. It's not. You're clearly seen. Other people don't mind being with you. You know what the problem I tell all y'all here a lot of times? Y'all not good friends. Because you all, you be real with each other and tell them. You know you're naked. You know everybody see you, right? Don't worry about it. That'll break your heart. <sighs> this is a beautiful way. I just get people to just kind of grasp it, just really just really see the significance of why we need to make sure we get this, because you just don't know. Um, let's look at this. About a sheet 17 and 1, 26 and 1. Y'all hang in there. You need it. I'm doing all the standing. Like I told you guys before, the words of the wise are as golds, which means they incite us. Y'all got me? That inciting should change what we're doing. Y'all got me? It should empower you. I told you you shouldn't go anywhere and sit and still lead with that same captive mind. What we're hearing should incite you that there should be a change. It should spark you that there should be a difference. That's what these words are supposed to do. It should make you want to be free. Not just free from sin. You want to be free from everything that will keep you in any, any type of way in bondage. It just makes you that point. You want to be so free, you don't want to be captive to nothing. You'd rather die than be captive. That's Shem Shum. Hmm? You know what's amazing? They have some branches of government and intelligence. Do you know they give them something when they go out? Suicide people. If you capture, it's better you just go ahead and die. I got too much information to sit here and be caught and have you sit here and ridicule and put me out like that. Hmm? That's what Yahuwah did. Yahusha did. Got too much information for this. Just go ahead and die. Take the cup out of there. He told me it's finished. He told you what they gave. gave him poison. You realize how much information I got? These people get me and pin me down and wind up going through here and getting this information out of me? This stuff could destroy a nation. Wow, they wonder where these other people get it from. Regular soul, they don't tell them that. They tell them name, regular You don't know if that can hurt us. Little bit you know ain't nothing. They got some people, they give them some. If you capture, you do know what you have to do, right? Listen, they got military pilots. If that plane crash, they know what they got to do. And if they don't do it, if we're going to make a trade to get you back, because we're going to kill you. You just don't know that because you ain't supposed to know it. They have certain pilots that fly planes that if they caught, if that plane go down, you better come up dead with it. Because if they get you, they're going to know how to work that plane. They're going to be able to get that information off of that plane, and that stuff can take down a whole nation. So you do know what you're supposed to do. Make sure you're dead, too. If one of them go down and they don't kill themselves, they'll make a trade with that country to get that back. They want to get them back. Because we're going to make sure you die. Because we know the only way you stay alive because you disobey order. And if they got you, we know you talk. Y'all forgot where, you, who, where his commands were. But if they keep you there, they keep going through that torture. What's going to happen? They already proven that the human body is going to take so much torture. So what you do? Take the suicide. I'm a soldier. If I die, let me die. What y'all think Shem Shem was going to do? These people already got him made ridicule. He didn't pray and say, let me get out. Let me kill as many of these bastards that I can with me. I'm taking a suicide. 
They don't know no better. Y'all just don't know no better. Why you think he took the cup? He already told y'all what was in the cup. He said poison. After he did it, after that, he won't hear the die. I got too much information that these people keep this up. And them folks would have kept him up there. Let me tell you something. First Corinthians 10. Oh, man, got but watch. Oh, yeah, but I'm getting old. We should be down the board and back up again. What's our goal? Comprehension. Command of subject. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11. Listen. Now, all these things. Everything that happened. Pay attention. If you want to go back up to the first verse, he'll tell you about what happened, how he wants you ignorant. How all our albums passed through the cloud, through the sea, were all immersed unto Moshe. How they all ate the same ruach meat and drunk the same drink. But with men of me, when we are pleased, told you about all these things happened, how he destroyed, how he killed off a lot of these people. Because you know why? They wound up succumbing to the situation around. They forgot the training. We have strict orders. They forgot the training. He told you what happened. Now these people were destroyed. All right, let's see what happened. Now all these things happened unto them for in samples. So that for an example. What happened? And they are written for our admonition. For our warning. Come on. Upon whom the ends of the are writs are come. Listen. Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth. Keep standing. Take heed. Lest. He fall. I'm strong enough to go around my family and do whatever. I'm strong enough to go wherever and do whatever. You see you better take heed. You'll wind up falling. A lot of y'all ain't strong as you think of y'all. If you were strong, you'd do just like Yahuwah did. You stay with what he told you. You probably don't believe. I ain't going to believe you unless you come over here and see him. But do just like he said. It rent, I ain't supposed to tempt Allahim. He ain't take me away from you for no reason. He took me away from you to make sure I'm going to be obedient. You my problem. Y'all know, the truth is, y'all ain't know, everybody here know what their problem is. He told your stomach to block. He don't tell what I'm going to do to you. He said, the man that said his stomach, you put your own stomach to block right in your own face. You know why you sit here and you get a mess. You got to leave him alone. He ain't going to make it. There's a lot of stuff y'all out here got. You got to cut them out. You ain't going to make it. I ain't going to lie to you. I'm looking at your policy. I wouldn't die with it. Some of these here got term policy, and the term done ran out. You know what's bad about a term policy at some point? Term policies are good. White people got term. This one. Certain stuff that black people should handle been with term policies, but not unless you know what you're doing. Uh, uh, adjustable interest rate. Black people don't need to let you know what you're doing. None of that would have set up for you. Those are for people that make strategic moves. Strategic where my job transferred me somewhere. I don't want to live in an apartment. I'm going to get a house, and I'm going to make my money back. See, strategic. Fool is my job will pay, and I, I pay me the, the difference, and I can buy an apartment. They paying for it. This is because you're an idiot. Okay? Strategic is, my job going to pay me, I'm going to buy a house. I'm going to buy this house with an adjustable rate, which is going to be lower than subprime. With that lower rate, I'm going to pay in this house. I'm going to be here for three, four years. My job, I can go back home. I'm going to sell the house. I just made all my money back and ain't spent no money. I made more money. That's strategic. That's what I do. You're an idiot. You went out, copped out for get apartment because your job paid for it. So you didn't make nothing. I buy a house. My job is going to pay me for it. I'm going to get a lower interest rate because it's an adjustable rate. I'm going to sell this house before the rate adjusts. Now I'm going to get all my money back that they paid. Now I got the money back that they paid for the house, and I got my salary. That's the difference between me and you. I know a lot of y'all here smarter than me. Ain't that right like Rudy said? Rudy said, ha, ha, I like that. Be the dumbest person in the room. I like that. You see the difference with strategic? Versus just dumb. Because you've been doing stuff so bad. Because somebody paying you think you've done something. White people learn how to make money even off their money. So it's, all, it's a win-win. You got me? So when you start doing certain things strategic, you don't get a term policy unless you got enough other policy. You get that because it's cheaper and you're just trying to cover something till you get past it. If I live past that point, I don't need it. It's cheap and it's only covering me to get something I need done. Otherwise, you don't touch a term positive. You never buy a term positive for your, for your insurance because you just, as long as you got something, that's stupid. 
because your age is going to change. On top of that, your health is going to change. With me, now when you go get a whole policy, you're going to pay more money. You just made a dumb move. You buy as much as you can while your health is good and while you're young. You only get a term positive if you got something else. You say, if I die, I don't want to leave this debt on you, so I have a term positive. If I die within 15 years, I should pay this off in 15. But if I die before then, this policy will cover that, and you ain't left with no debt. Only reason you get a term positive. You never buy a term positive as, this is my insurance. This is stupid. What a lot of you guys have done with you who you bought a term policy. You know how it covered you until you got out of the water? The same as you were, you was under that water breathing. Y'all was as close as you were to being saved. In that water, you should have been breathing. Now, how long are you gonna live in that? How long are you gonna live in that water breathing? That was the closest you were gonna get. Because you went with a term policy and it ran out. Term policies run out. They cheat. That's why people get them. They cheat. Fools go. What I'm gonna tell you, you gotta do. It's gonna cost you everything you got. At least I'm honest. You go back and report me to my boss, and my boss found out I sold you something I ain't had to. My boss put my stuff under review. Unlike some of these companies, I work for one of the companies. Just to let y'all know, this call has been recorded. Periodically, my boss likes to go back through all of my deals and like to look back on my paperwork with people. Somebody, he's, he might call you and may do a survey with you. You don't know that. He'll let something happen to you. And look at, he'll look and realize, Smith sold you that. That's against the integrity of our company. Periodically, he like to do reviews with people that I made deals. We just like to go back over. You have people that do that. Anybody did mortgages? Sometimes with some company, they'll have people that's up on a high end before they underwrite. That's what it got underwrite for. Because a mortgage person will sit down and tell you anything. Oh, yeah, you good. I can get you underwrite and get it and kick it back. Stipulation. How many of y'all dealt with that before? They keep sending stuff back. But the mortgage person, oh, we good. And they keep sending stuff. You're like, where all this come from? Underwrite and look at this. The fool who you talking to don't do what I do. See, I'm under some high strict guideline. They made the promise because they just want to get you to the table. They're going to tell you a lot of stuff. When I got your stuff, because our stuff is going to be mandated by the government, which means they're going back over this, which means criminal charges can come up. I ain't finna go to jail for this deal. Well, let me tell you all about this. I ain't finna go to hell for this deal. See, everything you do in natural life, you can realize. Just a certain credit score you got to have. There's a certain debt ratio. If you got too much debt, I can't get you in this. Y'all know that? My boss going to look at I like you. I want to get you out. When my boss, I shoot this stuff back on the under right, he going to get that stuff. The people that can't going to be looking at that fire saying, he can't do it. I'm saying, but come on. I done told him. Well, you better go back and tell me he can't do it. But I gave my word. You shouldn't have. Now go back and tell me I'm qualified. Don't y'all know that's the same way with salvation? You know what he's going to look at? Your debt ratio. I love everything I got. It's going to be a problem. Then you're going to know what else he's going to want you to do. I'm going to need you to pay off some of your stuff. Because if you got too many obligations, you ain't going to be able to commit to this house. Well, salvation the same way. Y'all got so many other debt. You got so many out other outstanding debt. You got so many commitments, the prior commitment, that you can't meet. And that's what underwrite, especially to look at all this and wait is to say, practically, not practical. All we finna do is sell somebody a house that finna be sitting right back in our lap in two to three months. Six months, great. In a year, now we gotta look at the cost we're gonna spend in court costs on top of we losing money on rent. Then we gotta pay him to get out of the house. You know what they're best to do? Not nah, now, we can't do it. They gotta look at your record. Your credit score is a record. Same thing, he's gonna look at. I'm gonna look at the record. What's on record with you? I'm trying to tell y'all something about yourself. That you got to look at, this man ain't stupid. You think these people that sell houses are smarter than all of him? I'm looking at you. You can't, there's no way in the world you're going to be able to, you can't focus, you can't think, you can't concentrate. You give, oh, every time you weep. I watch this, some of the dumbest excuses that can come. I can't focus. I got to quit. If they ain't going on, I don't know sometimes. Some, all this stuff is cop out of him. All cop out. Nobody's going to make no commitment with you. You know why I know why all this stuff happened? Too many obligations. Too many other obligations. That's why when he talked about you coming, let me tell you what a man told me, my boss told me, anybody he's told me to sell a house. Told he said, any man want the house, he's going to deny himself. You ought to get out of all them other obligations. Go to all them other people and tell them you done cut them obligations. Then you come see me. That's the only way you get in this house. 
You know what people do to get housing? Years ago, you could do stuff. They let you lie. Now stipulation came in. Now they put more guy like they look at how many houses would turn back. Before you could do a whole lot of lie. They'll help you lie. They'll fill out for you and love. Now they look at now because the government done stepped in because of the housing market crash. Now they got a little, little stricter. They started to go in, and that's what he started again. Cause so many people have failed. They tried to come at him. He said, "Let's try to make sure we get these guy. Go back over these guidelines. I need to check every one of these deals before anybody commit to them. Cause I don't need nobody coming, getting it, and then later on they can't do it. You got me? I don't need nobody coming in saying you're gonna be saved, you won't be saved, and you can't do it because I'm looking at your debt ratio and your stupidity, and there's no way in the world you're gonna be able to prove and get it. Make sense? Now you think the housing market's smarter than all of all they're doing is looking at your record. You can try to explain it to me, but I'm looking at your record. Then I got the guidelines. Federal guideline mandate. I mean, override how I feel about you. Override what I think about you. It mandates. It dictates. So now let's move it on to this. The word dictate whether you're going to be saved or not. Once I get your stuff, I, I offer it. Everybody want to be saved? I want to get everybody in the house. Now when I get your paper, I'm going to need your paperwork. I'm going to need to get a few years of what you've been doing. Hmm? I'm going to need some current statements. Everybody here want to get a house? I'm talking about the plan of salvation house. Now, when I get all your stuff in your bank, all this is going to tell us something about you off the rip. First of all, I'm going to tell us you can't maintain a balance. You can't maintain a balance with what you got. We're going to add more on you. This is not practical. For the last two years, you ain't been doing nothing. You got so many gaps in employment as far as you staying consistent with something. You from job to job. What's the chance you're going to hold something down and be able to pay this mortgage? Don't you know all these things are the variable that's going to play? Let me ask you this. Can you put 5% down? Let me tell you why I want that. Because if you ain't got nothing in it, what's going to make you stay committed to it? That's crazy. Why they want... Conventional want 20. I'm just, I'm sorry. You did say you wanted it, right? Not that bad. I'm glad to know that because I don't want to commit to it either. You see the difference? If you ain't willing to put down 20%, you saying you're going to, what you losing? You're going to live in it, right? They ask you this. You agree this is going to be your primary, right? Which means this is going to be your first obligation. You know, it makes a difference what I'm going to give you the loan, whether it's going to be your primary or your second. Because you got another one, even with a second wife, somebody's going to get neglected. They know your law. Go get a second home. You know what they tell you? The same thing your law said. The obligation to the first one can't be neglected. You know what I'm going to need before I let you get a second home? Let me see your stuff to see how well you've been paying the first one. You're like, well, they ain't got nothing. It's got everything to do with it. How you been treating the first one? Why would I let you commit to a second one? Is that throwing y'all? You just getting to see an opportunity really look at how stuff works. You living in a world with a system, and that system is on itself because they've taken some of the design of it from our system. And that's why these people know why not to allow you to get certain things because they see your commitment already. This is the most valuable thing you have. You can't be committed to this first. This is your primary. The primary, if you can lose everything else. Let me tell you what people typically do in society. I lose my job right now. I'm going to default on every credit card. I'm going to default on them. I got to. I'm going to default on no credit card. Because that's not primary for me right now. Can't worry about that. I got to have a car so I can get around, so I can try to get me another job, and I got to have somewhere to stay. When all that fell, I'm going to get behind a little bit on the electrical stuff and on the car notes. But I got to keep lights on. That's going to be need, because I need that in order to see the business primary. The last thing I'm going to give up is going to be that house. I might lose the car. I might have bum a ride or something or try to do an Uber or something. I'm manipulate. But that house has got to be primary because if nothing else, i got to have somewhere to stay. Y'all got me? Typically, that's how the system works. Nobody's going to go lose their job and let their house go and keep their credit cards. You're typically going to let them go in their order. That's why they why When they get your stuff, that's why they pull your credit because I'm trying to see how much other stuff you got because i got to look at how this system works. You know why they tell you it's bad when you don't have no debt? Or you don't have no history. Because it's going to be the first thing you don't let go. You ain't got nothing else. I need some other alternative that you can let go, and this be the last thing you got. Hmm? I ain't going to never let go of my house. I'm going to let go of the credit cards. I'm going to let go of the people. I'm going to let go of the line. Let go of the drinking. Because I got to have somewhere to stay. Hmm? 
I got to. You can pull my credit record. Everything else I got, I can lose it. I can let it go because I can work around that. I got to have somewhere to stay. He said, when this earthly tabernacle is all, I got to have another building. And you know what he ain't going to do? He's not going to let me sign no contract agreement for that other house when they did good with this one. Because he's going to go back and look at the first How well you been doing with the first house? Well, I, I mean, so I missed a couple of them. Let's cancel that deal. Y'all got me? I want to make sure you don't miss this. Come on. By the sheet, 17 and 1, 26 and 1. Oh, finish out that 10, 1 Corinthians 10. Verse 12. 13. 13. Listen to what he said. There have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to a noose. So with Yahushua, tell me what, what, what took him that one common, which means shared by many. He wasn't the first man on the two. Hmm? He wasn't the first man to be led to judgment. And he wasn't the first man to be stripped. So he just told you, ain't no temptation have taken you, but such which is common to man. But Elohim is faithful. That's why I'm holding on. And with, come on, son, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape. That's why the last cup had to be poisoned. I know how much you could take. You know, sometimes you try to count yourself out and you try to quit before time. You know how much you could take. That man wasn't going to take but so much up on that too, laying up there, sitting up there, hungry and thirsty. So with the temptation, he had to make a way to escape. Huh? Even your book told you in the book of Romans. Pick me on Psalm 927. Maybe I don't know your book, huh? Am I talking Swahili? Nine twenty-six. Listen. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living Allahim. Listen. Yeshayahu also crieth concerning Yasharal. Like what? Though the number of the children of Yasharal be as the sand of the sea. So tell them what's going to happen. A remnant shall be saved. See that? Ain't but a remnant going to be saved. Listen. For he will finish the work and cut it short in Sadiq. Yeah. Because a short work will Yahuwah make upon the Aritz. That's what I'm talking about. Listen. And as Yahshiahu said before. What happened? Except Yahuwah of Shabbat. Had they left what? us a seed. Tell them what would have happened. We had been, we had been as Saddam and made, been made like unto Gomorrah. See that? The man knew exactly what he was doing. Huh? That man knew exactly what he was doing. He knew exactly what he had to cut off and when it had to stop. We've been in trouble. We have been in trouble. Listen, tell me 25 what I want. Let me see what 25 says since we're there. Listen. As he saith also in Osi, I will call them my people which were not my people, and her beloved which was not beloved. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, yeah. there shall they be called the children of the living Allahim. Come on. Yashiahu also crieth concerning Yasharal. Though the number of the children of Yasharal be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. Yes. For he will finish the work and cut it short in Sadiq. Yes. Because a short work will Yahuwah make upon the Aritz. Yes. And as Yashiahu said before, except Yahuwah of Shabbat had left us a seed, yes. we had been as Sodoma and, let, and been made like unto Gomorrah. Mm. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles, which followed not after Sadiq, have attained to Sadiq. Even the Sadiq, which is a faith. But Yasharal, which followed after the law of Sadiq, hath not attained to the law of Sadiq. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. Now, in looking at that, this is what we're considering now. How important it is what the law is supposed to yield for us. He talked about the Gentiles getting this according to the righteousness of faith and not according to the law. And yet we follow after the law, and yet our forefathers who did follow after the law didn't obtain it by the Sadiq of faith. We see the importance of Abraham and Yasakut Yakov. The mere fact of they had the law, but they believed. So you can follow a lot of things. Some of y'all are here today on the Shabbat because that's the law, but you don't believe it. There's a lot of y'all got scarves on and, and pants. Man, some of you guys will wear these, these women's skirts. 
if it wasn't for the law. But you don't believe because of the Sadiq of faith. That's why you can easily turn and let go of things. Because you only do it because of the law. You don't do it because of it's in your heart and you actually believe it. Y'all got me? The same thing we're looking at. This man knew exactly what he's doing. He knew how much they could take. Had he not stayed his hand, just like when he sent him in, when he sent in the Malachi to destroy him after Dao had numbered the people. After he said to slaughter the people, what he told the Malachi to do? Stay your hand. He knew just how much they could take. Had it been any more, they'd have been like Solomon, made like under Gomorrah. I'd have killed all of them. He knew exactly what he's doing on every end and every fact that we have to be able to trust and believe. Just like he said, and we glory, not only so, but we glory in Triple A because we know what it's going to work. It's going to work patient. Patient going to work experience. Experience going to work hope. And that's going to keep us where we don't become ashamed. Come on, give me this right quick. By the sheet 17 and 1 and 26 and 1. Listen. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, Allahim appeared to Abram and said unto him, Do what? I am the almighty Allahim. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Which would be what? Blameless. Walk before me and be thou blameless. Now, typically being Christian, a Christian minor with Christian anti, people just believe all you do is just stay in his sight. You're not going to stay in his sight if you're not doing his will. You got me? How are you going to do his will if you haven't been taught? Because it's written in the, it's written in the, the, the box. And what did the Debar did? They naba, not prophesy. We had to get away from divine as well. Divine is going to put you over into another era. Divine. Gonna put you over to Deus and Zeus. Deus gonna put you over to Pantheon. Back over to that house of many gods, or all gods. I always y'all Greek people, y'all remember that? One of the players y'all heard about Deus? Gonna put you back over another one of the Greek gods. Goddesses. Divine. Everything these people got, they got something to mess us up. It's hard to find something clean with these people. When he told us all table full of vomit, ain't no place clean. You see how we got to get away from everything they got. They don't, they, they don't have nothing. You see the need. And, it's, and you know why I find all these words sounding, it models a lot of their words driving us to do? It drives us to get away from them. The need to get away from their conversation. The need, to wait, the need to get away from that answer. You can't win. You can't win. When something is divine, lovely, all that, no, it's got a whole nother antic behind it. Everything putting you right, it just shows you just how much discipline these people, and you got to look at how much time they put in to come in here and to mess our book up. These are the type of people that we wind up messing with. Okay. Okay. Uh, at the bottom sheet, 26 and 1. I don't got something to show you. I'm going to let y'all go. It's important for you anyway. I know y'all tired today. Let me see right here. I don't know why I put that second. Brother Beth. Malachim. Beth. Mal. Akim. Uh, ten and ten. Finish that twenty six and one. About a sheet. Naba is supposed to be the equivalent of flow, of letting it flow. 
their speech, which come from the Naba. Listen. And there was a famine in the land, beside the first famine that was in the Yamim of Abraham. What happened? And Yatsukut went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. Yes. And Allahim appeared unto him and said, Go not down unto Mitzrayim. Y'all quit playing in front row. What y'all got going on? Pay attention. I need y'all pay attention. Come on. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Yes. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee. Tell him why, son. And I will Baruch thee, for unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries. That's right, Baruch. I bless. Listen. And I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy Abba. Listen. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of Shamayim. So that's what Moshe brought back to him, didn't he? You say you're going to multiply him at the stars. He could have brought that up if he didn't have the information. He had to have the information. He brought that up. But listen, what happened? And I will give unto thy seed all these countries. Listen. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the Aritz be Baruch. See that? Listen. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and, and kept else? my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Now, this is what we look at, brethren. At the 17th chapter, he just said, walk before me and be blameless. How is he going to do that without information? What information? He hearkened to the sound of the teror. When he called, he answered. Y'all hear me? When he called, he answered. Not only he kept all of my statutes, he kept all of my laws, he kept my commandment. This is what made him blameless. So when we come back to try to recall something and trying to get something, the reason why we all falter is because we're not blaming. And we're not blaming because you don't want to keep it. As just as Yahoo said, they have not all obeyed. And this is not going to make you become the seeds of Abraham. Y'all got me? We got to get to that point. Look at what happened to those children. This man was able to stay and not be removed because Abraham obeyed. He kept. He hearkened to my book. How many times y'all been guilty of not doing what I tell y'all do? How many times? He said, he that hear you hear me. You ain't even hearing all of him. How you going to be saved? You don't put yourself in the way because of your funky attitude, your stupidity that you don't even hear and you going to hell because you don't made it about yourself. Not about your salvation. You made about your personal doing, your personal wrongdoing, your personal disobedience, your personal just violation of his law. And what is he going to do? He's going to personally send you to hell. That's why he said, come back. Some will repay every one of them to their face. He wasn't joking. He ain't going to talk behind your back. He's going to come back. I'm going to pay everybody to their face. I had a friend one time who was in school. His name was Ron. It was messing with him one time. The guy was Joan. It was funny, too. We were just sitting there. And uh, he told the guy, he said, lad, that's going to break your nose. Everybody that had an issue with he told everybody, he said, let's just come and break your nose. They just kept on John and kept on laughing. He was sitting there beside, we just doing stuff and just thinking nothing about it. School don't went on. Mind you, we way up early in the school year. Glad they school. Do you know what that man did? He went down the hall. He broke everybody's nose. He didn't almost break them. He broke everybody's nose. He told me he was going to break them. He went personally around that whole school and found every one of them people and broke their nose. He came in to him, he said, I told you I was going to break their nose. I was like, wow. He actually kept that. School, I, listen, never acted different the whole time. He just told him just to catch away. He said, Lad, they're going to break your nose. Lad, they're going to break your nose. Then her no, then hold, listen, just kept everything just the normal he was going. Lad, they school. He broke everybody knows. Everybody knows we're broke. That he told he was gonna break them. You who say when he come back here, lad their school. I'm gonna bust your ass. Right in here. Ain't gonna be to your face. Now, because ain't nothing changed down here, just like I was when we was in school run. Don't think he forgot. Called the sun coming up and other stuff and other bit. We had, you know, we had pelt rallies. We had football games. We had basketball games. We had all kind of stuff. Went on. We had talent show here went on through the year. Y'all know how much stuff we had opposite day. Y'all know how much stuff we had pajama day. He never forgot. Led their school. He came to school. He walked around and found every woman broke their nose. Led their school. He going to bust your ass. I just had to put that on the record. Let's look at this right quick.
Ah, that's beautiful. Listen. No, now. Those who are you'll call it Second Kings. Listen. Know now that there shall fall unto the Aritz nothing of the Dabari of Yahuwah, which Yahuwah spake concerning the house of Ahab, for Yahuwah have done that which he spake by his servant, or Yahu. Listen. So Jehu slew all that remained of the house of Ahab in Jezreel, and all the great Anus and his kinsfolk and his Kohan, until he left him none remaining. See that? He killed all his sons. He told him, he said, never going to fall to the uh, rich. Nothing he told him. He killed him. man had 70 sons. Killed all of them. Every one of them. He said, none of them. It wasn't going to just fall. It wasn't going to work. It gone out of his mouth. It ain't coming back void. Come on, son. And he arose and departed and came to Samaria. And as he was at the shearing house in the way, mm -hmm. Jehu met with the Aki of Ahaziah, Malak of Yehuda, and said, Who are ye? And they answered, We are the Aki of Ahaziah, and we go down to salute the children of the Malak and the children of the ruler. Listen. And he said, Take them alive. And they took them alive and slew them at the pit of the shearing house, even two and forty anus, neither left he any of them. Come on. And when he was departed thence, he lighted on Jehonadab, the ben of Rechab, coming to meet him, and he saluted him and said to him, Is thine heart right, as my heart is with thy heart? And Jehonadab answered, It is. If it be, give me thine hand. And he gave him his hand, and he took him up to him into the chariot. Mm -hmm. And he said, Come with me and see my zeal for Yahuwah. So they made him ride in his chariot and when he came to Samaria he slew all that remained unto Ahab in Samaria till he had destroyed him according to the saying of Yahuwah which he spake to all Yahu. You see what I'm talking about? That's a zeal according to knowledge. He brought him up and he said I want you to go with me and see that my, I want you to see my zeal. Yo, hold on, I'm going to go down here and kill everything. See what the book said? He ain't turning from it. I'm gonna kill every one of them. That was the, that was that's that's what that was the Nava to make sure all Ahab's son were gonna be killed. He killed every one of them. He made sure nothing had fallen to the ground of his word. It didn't fall on death. It was it gone out of his mouth. It was gonna be for him. Yahuwah said, "I said it. I'm gonna do it." Every one of y'all in here, he said it. He gonna do it now. Listen. And Jehu gathered all the people together and said unto them, "What is saying? Ahab served Baal a little." And what happened? But Jehu shall serve him much. See that? He's going to show you his zeal for him. Listen. Now therefore call unto me all the prophets of Baal and his servants and all his priests. Let none be wanting, for I have a great sacrifice to do to Baal. Whosoever shall be wanting, he shall not live. Listen. But Jehu did it in subtility. Wow. They're like Jehu. I'm going to deceive you. He did our subtility. I'm going to show you my zeal for all of him. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to deceive you. I'm going to set you up. I'm going to draw you in. That's how you're going to get these nations in. How you think you're going to get all them nations coming to the valley of Yahushua? How you think you're going to get them down there? Through subtility. You think them people coming down there and know they're going to get killed? I'm going to deceive these people. These people are going to blindly run down, just like he deceived Pharaoh and his army to run down in the Red Sea. I'm going to deceive these people. I'm going to catch these people down in the valley, and there I'm going to plead with all nations. Come on, son. To the intent that he might destroy the worshipers of Baal. He's going to destroy the worshipers of Baal. What happened? And Jehu said, what did he say? proclaim a solemn assembly for Baal, yeah. and they proclaimed it. See that? Just proclaim a certain period of time to get them there. Give them something so they'll come. It could be anything, a funeral. It could be a, a Mother's Day special they're going to have there. It could be anything these people got for Father Day. It's going to be a deacon convention. It's going to be a mother. It's going to be a quiet anniversary. Proclaim a solemn feast and let them come. Come on. And Jehu sent Wait, through, uh, come on. through all Yasharal yeah. and all the worshipers of Baal came. Yeah. 
so that there was not a, a news left that came not. Listen. And they came into the house of Baal, and the house of Baal was full from, yeah. from one end to, the, uh, to another. Yeah. What happened? And he said unto him that was over the vestry, bring forth vestments for all the worshippers of Baal, mm. and he brought them forth vestments. Yeah. And Jehu went, and Jehonadab the ben of Rechab, into the house of Baal, and said unto the worshippers of Baal, what is that? Search and look that there be here with you none of the servants of Yahuwah. Now you got to ask yourself something. Y'all in these churches other places, how many other people Yahuwah was in there? None. He made sure it before he killed them. Made sure I don't have nobody in him. That's a, you know they search, you know, know the way he read they had to go get two or three out of them. Didn't make sense. Why would they be going somewhere where they worship ball? Why would they? Let me tell you what typically what people have done with us. People have programmed our minds to keep trying to do it. And this is because we want to do it. We want to try to prove people how we can fit in and how we can do stuff. And we still ain't changed. That's the dangerous part. We should have changed. We should have changed enough to realize something. We ain't got no business in the Ida Temple. Let the idol, let the four have the idol tell. What are these people doing here? They got Jesus Christ, cross, pictures of white angels. Why am I in Ball's temple? Why am I in Ball's temple? I'm listening to something. That book says, if any come unto you and, and preach not this Dabarim, receive them. None of your heart need to bid them all of him speak. He don't bid him all of bid him all of him speak. You partake of the evil deed. All of, this, this everybody different now. I'm going to tell you how stuff works for me. I don't listen to no false prophets. If I did, I'm going to tell you the difference between me and you. People can have an ailment and it can be contagious. Y'all got it? Where they go? Doctor. The doctor know how to come in there and deal with them without getting it. They don't let everybody else do that. I don't care how it contagious, the doctor deal with them, don't he? He know how to deal with them. He know how he got to probably clean himself to make sure he don't get in that. He know what he need to take and where his immune system need to be before he come in the room and when he leave. You too stupid to do that. You're going to walk right in there and you're behind from getting infection. That's the difference. He's trained to do that, not you. Don't ever try to do everything I do. I'm trained to do that. Y'all got me? If I go into a church, I know exactly what I'm supposed to go in there to do. I'm not going to go in nobody's church, and I definitely ain't be sitting in your church listening to you tell me nothing. It's not going to happen. And I, I'm in Ball Temple. What are they going to hear? I'm going to hear the words of Ball. For what reason? This can only be a snare for me. I need y'all to get conscious enough to really. Do y'all understand what's wrong? This man said he told he did it through subtility. Then he just told him to serve. Let's find out how many he got out of there. Let's see. Listen. Sir, hey, now what verse was that again? 23. What did it say? And Jehu went and Jehonadab the ben of Rechab into the house of Baal and said unto the worshippers of Baal, What did he say? Search and look. For what? That there be here with you none of the servants of Yahuwah, but the worshippers of Baal only. What happened? And when they went in to offer sacrifices and burnt offerings, Jehu appointed fourscore anus without. And, and without. Come on. And said, If any of the anus whom I have brought into your hands escape. Do what? He that letteth him go, his life shall be for the life of him. So that made them a watchman. If you let anyone these people off, that's your ass. I ain't put my ass on the line for none of y'all. Hmm? I'm going to tell y'all something to finish that out for you. Y'all hear what he said? Listen, what does happen? And it came to pass, what happened? as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, that Jehu said to the guard and to the captains, Go in and slay them, let none come forth. And they smote them with the edge of the sword, and the guard and the captains cast them out, and went to the city of the house of Baal. Mm -hmm. And they brought forth the images out of the house of Baal and burned them, and they break down the image of Baal and break down the house of Baal and made it a draught house unto this yun. See that? A shittim house. If you finna take a shittim, go ahead and do it at where Baal house at. 
That's all it was. Why would I be in the church? Only way I'm going to be in the church if I was just taking a shit on No, that they ain't said they rebuilt it and made a synagogue. Made it a, a bath. Only thing they you can do with it is just take a shit a minute. Abarim 2 and 1. Listen. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed. Y'all pay attention. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest what? The more earnest heed. Hold for you, give me that. Give me that 1 Corinthians again, 10th chapter. Jump down, let me say that the 19th chapter, 19 verse right quick. All right, got up here, 10, 19. Then we'll finish that up <sighs> so I can get and let y'all go. I know y'all tired of me now. If you hate me, I guarantee you can't hate me no more than I hate you. Y'all know who I care about? I care about those that got a mind that want to be saved. And my goal is to make sure we make it in. Let the rest of these people go to hell out here they want to go. Y'all got a mind to be saved. I'm going to put the effort of time in. Y'all hear me? I spend money. I ain't done. I'm going to let y'all go because I know it's all y'all can handle. But I'm going to be under with y'all. We got a lot of work we got to do quick. He said a short work. Short work means, you know what? And then when he get through, it's going to still be right. I'm trying to tell y'all, it's going to be a quick work. When that man come in here on us, it's going to be a quick work. Let me tell you something. A lot of people got themselves thrown. A lot of people got excited with ass, damn, hell, uh, shit them with that Tim on it. A lot of, I mean, they're not curse word, but at this point, I need to motivate our people to go a different path. A lot of y'all done got in your heart and, oh, it throw me. Ain't nothing throw you. You ain't no band. I already know what y'all doing here. Huh? I know you ain't no band. But you need to find something to be justified when you go the wrong way. You can't find no condemnation for the word because it ain't none. I got condemnation for your behavior, though. But this don't move you. This don't strike you. Ass, damn, shit them, hell, bother you. Can't hardly think, can't hardly concentrate. I don't know how this don't bother you. This is a direct violation. Let's see what he told you. 10, 19. Listen. What say I then that the idol is anything. Y'all hear that? We know an idol ain't nothing. What happened? Or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything. What happened? But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice. Who they do? They sacrifice to devils. And not. To Allahim. So why am I in your temple? I already know you sacrifice to the devil. Unless I believe in Jesus. Unless I believe in God. Which one is it? Do I believe him or not? I'm going to let somebody give him and teach me about going to heaven and, and what Jesus do. The name of a slave ship. A Latin, a, a earth pig. And I'm going to let you teach me about it. I'm going to ignore it like you ignore me. People watching you. Listen. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. I'm trying to think now. The things that the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to Allahim. Where do they sacrifice it, I wonder? What is the again, thing? And you are not. That ye should have fellowship with devils. I can't. Them in the grocery store. I can't control who in the grocery store. I go in a restaurant. I can't control who in a grocery store or no restaurant. I can't control who work on my job. I control where I go, though. I can control going to that church. Especially I know you finna offer sacrifice to your God. Why am I here unless I believe in your God? Because Yahu, his name would probably have to be Yahoo, not Jehu. Why would he, you saw him, he had enough to serve to see who would be in him. And you know what else he did? Look, y'all missed something as he did. Thank you, sir. What did he do? Cause those clothes gonna identify him. That way I know exactly who I'm gonna kill. Y'all missed that. He made sure he gave everyone a vesture. I want you to put on, you look just like them. 
So when he come through the killer, everybody in church will worship a ball. If any of them get out, life for life. When Yahoo went up, he told you what it was. I'm going to show you my zeal. I'm going to show you my zeal. See, he told you Yahshua all had a zeal, but what was it? Because they won't kill him. It's some good folks in there, and it's some bad folks. It's some honest folks in there, and it's some people that are not honest, just like at our synagogue. I know what you're saying. I already know. Listen, I know y'all. Listen, me and him talk. I know my, he know, I know his people. He let me know, them your people. You know, he let me know, I know your kind. I know your kind. See, a lot of stuff we've been so casual about, no. If I go in their temple, I'm going to turn them away from what they're doing. That's my good. He said, hey, they stood in my council and called the people to hear my dabarine, then I could turn them for what they're doing. What the fall prophet going to turn them from? Every lie been told. You know what lie? Where they gone? Where the person that casket at? In heaven. Who needed to take them and put them in a God? Who, who loved them? You loved them, but God loved them then. It's all the same lies. It's all the same lies. Nothing ever changed. In the name of the Father, name of the Son, name of the Holy Ghost. Now they got three of them. Make up your mind. We are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Those people that went in there, they were destroyed. Lack of knowledge. And then he told you what they did. You rejected. it. Y'all see, we got to get conscious and realize, it don't matter about no family when it comes. When it comes down to our salvation, that's got to be primary. That's got to be primary. It don't mean, I don't, they're going to mean you don't love them. How you ain't going to be the hell if they dead? How they know? If they know that much, they ain't dead. I'm done now. Now you sleep. Why you ain't come to my funeral? Because you ain't dead. One, come to church with me. We're going to have a choir appreciation. Choir. It's just going to be the choir singing. Who that choir going to sing to? What they going to be singing? God's spell. Why am I listening to my singing? I don't, this is all y'all. I got rid of all my gospel music. I don't listen to 102.5. I listen to talk radio, and I listen to what y'all saying here. I don't listen to that stuff. I got rid of that junk. I don't, I don't listen. I don't listen. I don't listen. I don't put my radio on. I know some of y'all here. I didn't listen, but I don't listen. I know. They sin. I just eat shit them, and my breath don't stink. Do that make sense? It don't make sense. You don't listen to no gospel music, and you ain't with it. I don't listen. I'm down there. I don't listen at all. I forget all about one of them. I don't listen to that junk. It don't make sense. If I'm saying it wrong, why am I listening to it? Now somebody laughed at me. A bunch of y'all getting hit in here tonight, huh? It don't make sense. Get rid of my stuff and still listen to it on the radio. I don't listen to it. Y'all made it. I just listen to y'all. I, I ain't got time. Because I'm, I'm, I'm hoping you believe what we're supposed to believe. And you're supposed to be standing on what we're standing on. You ain't doing what you're supposed to do. Now, I put your stuff in the same barrel with theirs. I ain't got time to listen to you either then. I ain't got time. I'm there too late in the evening now. We got a lot of stuff we do. We can't do it no more. Like I said, the time for us, spent. The day is ahead. We got them cast off the works of what? And put on the what? You know why you didn't put on them? Because you had on that same entire ball hat. I told you to take it off. Everybody, don't you know he, that's why, let me tell you something. We're about to make some changes. Then. We're going to make some more changes. Because that let you know Everybody having the same attire, they worship and do the same thing. Which means we're going to make some changes. He gave them something to put on that sat here and showed to identify these people. He gave us something we got to put on. We have got to change our appearance. Not only from the outer reflect, but what's on the inside is what reflects the outside. Okay. What are we going to do? Keep being stupid? He just told me the thing that the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice the devil and not the Allah. And I just, he just said, I would not that you should. What are they saying? That mean, well, I don't want you to, but you can. What that mean, I would not? I don't want you doing it. That mean you shouldn't be doing it. Come on, finish this up. Then we're going to finish. We'll try to let y'all go to Hebrews. I'm sorry, Aubrey, two and one. They call it Hebrews. Listen. 
ye cannot drink the cup of Yahuwah. Uh-oh. Come on. And the cup of devils. He says, see that? He let them know you can't fool these people. I'm just telling you, a lot of stuff we do. I don't eat no funeral food. I just let them have it. I don't want it. Hell, I don't know the dead person put their hand in macaroni. I used to eat that stuff. I stopped. I don't want it. I don't want it no more. I don't want it. I to be honest. He told you because of all that. He said, we in the cup and not in their mouth. He said, don't eat the bread of the morning. I don't eat that bread. I'm going to have it. I go buy my own food. Hell, been crying all that stuff, snot around your nose. You know, even who even thought a big old pot of green? Snot and tears, that I'm good. Tell me, ooh, okra. Is that what you call it? Right. Some green roll out they know and I'm fed. Tell me, okra. Yeah, that's what it is. That's all I got to do is just throw two or three okras in there. I don't be honest now. How many of y'all grew up in the country with these collard greens? Who you think been throw some dung collard green out the door? Cause some snot that ran, a little snot bubble them fell off there. Spit bubble. No, for bull who and all this. Anybody finna throw no dung green? I'm like green cock. They ain't in that spit. It's the work you put in green. Right. Green things finna go out now. They finna throw no dung greens out no dough. All you do is throw two or three okras in there. They be all right. <laughs> See that stuff coming out there like that slime? That's all you do. Let them keep rolling. Stir a little bit more. They call it love. Anybody finna throw that stuff out there, man? Folks been cooking, working on them greens. Do y'all know how long it takes to cook good green, not crop parker? Man, you got to work some real green. I'm talking about grandma green. Mama country green. Man, my friend throw them doing greens out. Man, you have another funeral right there. No, no, I'm going to throw these greens out. Somebody stuck. Nigga, put them greens down. Nobody throwing no greens out, man. It's crazy. He told that man when he took it, why he told him for bear to cry and said, don't cover your mouth. And told him, don't eat the bread of the morning. How these folks have that stuff? We ain't got time for folks stuff. They'll be all right. All that stuff, man tradition. They all do stuff they own. We just, we've been so conformed to man tradition. Got to feed everybody. For what? So we're going to eat. Hell, eat when you get home. Get out the property. I don't eat funeral food. I just go and buy my own. I don't want to eat the food. I said, that'll be all right. Y'all all right? They're tight, ain't it? We got to get it right. Come on, finish this up. Ye cannot be partakers of Yahuwah's table uh -huh. and of the table of devils. Mm, that's amazing. He said they want to make sure they went in there. And he throwed a sacrifice to them. They folks come in and sit and eat and kill everyone. And so when you hear Shaul talking, don't it make better sense? Then you know what? I'm a, he killed all those people that worship the devil. All these people that worship, he killed them. Everybody that sat down and eat of that, he killed those people. Come on. Do we provoke Yahuwah to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? Come on. All things are lawful for me. But what happened? All things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. Yeah. Let no anew seek his own, but every anew another's wealth. Yeah. Whatsoever is sold in the shambles, that eat. Asking no question for conscience' sake. That's fine. Come on, the second chapter of the book of Abari. Abari 2 and 1. You go to Kroger, you want to, and eat whatever they got in there. Buy it and eat it. Be stupid if you want to. We don't know where all their meat come from. No more than they do. Now, historically, in their writing, their belief was when it came to eating the shampoo, which is the market, but that some of the meat that came back into the that came back into the market be sold had actually been brought from inside of the temple. When the Greeks would offer some of their stuff, they were bringing some of the food back and putting it back inside of the market. So they didn't know what meat was what. That's their historical writing about that. That is not tell you to eat no pork, but that's what you heard though. That don't make common sense. I know pork. Why in the world I'm gonna sit here and grab a damn pig foot and I'm gonna holler, I don't know what it is. You can spot a pig foot a mile away. I can spot a pig foot on an elephant. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? Crazy? You know the pig foot. But when they brought that meat back in the temple, now how do you know where that meat came from? Because we actually go tradition with what it is. We can't eat none of that meat in here because we don't know where none of it come from. That's just it. But if I know where it comes from, I ain't eating it. These people think they're smart. They think I moved on because I was stupid. Your mama. Your mama. I didn't move on because I, I didn't know what I was talking about. I just moved on because I just want to make sure y'all understand 
a lot of stuff you sitting down and you be eating with these people doing, you don't realize these people cook this stuff because of a certain God they got. And they cook to that God. Okay. Okay. Just like mama cooked her Sunday morning Christian dinner. It's to their God. It was certain food. Some of them grew up, they don't cook no Sunday. I don't cook no roast on no Tuesday. And now you cook the roast when? That was Sunday meal. That Sunday meal carry you Monday, Tuesday. When do you throw something at try to get on then by Friday, you be eating something else, and then Saturday you eat fish. And that Friday, they know you to come, and you eat fish Saturday. Ain't that right? Then they get prepared for their Sunday meal. That was their Sunday meal. That was the meal they were offering to their God. He told them, I will not just be part of you. Don't eat that stuff. They, they offer that stuff to the devils and not to Allah. Y'all hear me? And they'll invite you in and get you in and eat that stuff. That's stuff to their God. See, what well, we got to be smart. And like he said, a lot of stuff, we know they're the island. Now. Just like he told you, he defended ring. He said he fold, invite you and you be disposed to go. And they sit down and take something off to an island. Don't eat. Your ass sit right there and eat anyway. Like you stupid. I know I didn't hear what I thought I heard. Yeah, you did. No good and doing well what it was. And you sat down and you ate it anyway. He told you for conscience sake, not for your own, but them there watching. Because these folks going to use that stuff on you. They're going to say, you're a liar. Y'all don't think y'all finna be running y'all down. Y'all run me down. Y'all ask they deep, deep, your family. How, how many of y'all family here hypocrites? Some of y'all take your time. They, hold on for me. Oh, hell, I know I ain't just said something. You did like that for real. I just watched some of y'all here. Some of y'all felt like y'all had to think. How many of y'all need to think about y'all family hypocrites? Hey, my family hypocrite. Number one hypocrite. And they're going to play like these folks. And these folks don't love us. They only like to get you, talk to you, see what you say, go talk to somebody again, and they're going to compare notes on it and just come up with, I know you ain't right. Ain't no fool already know the scam. People put, we're the only fool. You, you were part of doing it to other people. How do you think something changed? That's everybody family. Don't you be stupid? People love to talk about people. Come on. And yeah, you the subject of matter. Crackheads get a pad. Homemongers get a pad. Drunks get a pad. Talk about your ass. Now y'all get yourselves conscious in here. Everybody been playing us. Don't you know these folks gonna use even show said, man, we made a spectacle to the rest of these people. You know, they like, folks sit around, don't even want to talk about adultery. Don't want to talk about, I got, family, I got members in my family that are molesters. Hell, they don't even talk about them. Won't even talk, and then invite them in and say, oh, they look good. How the hell a child molester look good? Right, right, right. The best child molester I ever seen was dead. Yeah. Yeah. But they'll wait time talking about me, though. Not scared that is. A child molester. They don't talk about it. They, hope they want to see him. And you look good. You like. You want to see a child molester? You got kids. They look at those people are better than us. How many of y'all got child molesters in y'all family? They run in the family. Some of y'all got to think about them. All these family. I need to be part of some of y'all family here. You know? Ain't nobody in your family child molester. That's amazing. Nobody drain, nobody do nothing. Let me tell you, the only ones you don't know about because your family hypocrite, they just don't tell you. They in now. They in now. They just hypocrite, they don't tell you. If folks, I ain't learned, to, I ain't learned about something I just here just recent some years ago. I'm trying to figure out how the hell they been in here this long. How they been killed or shot. Folks will wait till people die and tell you about them. Now, why you didn't say where they were living? I ain't unlike other people. I don't leave my family blameless. I put them out there on the light. I don't think nobody get no pass. But these folks don't have no problem running you down. If you could be a fly on the wall and hear what they say about you. You think they gonna let you go their way and they ain't running your behind down? That's what they do. That's what they do. And y'all be so done unconscious to be running and your lips on them asses. See, ass ain't going nowhere. Y'all need to get conscious. 
Everybody playing. These people need you to sit down to eat of that sacrifice. So they got you. They got you. They know they got you. These folks sit here and let you, and then what bad? When you can lie to yourself and think you lie to them and they come right back and tell you. That's what it was. I had one day made a dinner for them and called it something different and said so they asked them. Said so they wasn't no holiday dinner. What? They said, yes, it was. But if you want to lie to yourself and say it one, I just go along with your lie. And you know, when I tell you that and let you know I know, you do know I told the rest of them too, right? Y'all folks don't be catching on to nothing. You actually think I'm going to get you to do something and I ain't finna going to tell the rest of them? I'm going to keep, that's just my opinion. That I'm going to keep to myself. Your religion condemn everything I do. So first time I get something on your religion, I'm going to use it. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to put it against you. And I'm going to always know you're a hypocrite. You ain't never no position to say nothing to me. That's what these people want with us. Y'all understand that? The reason why I'm telling you that because you need to know how your adversary works. These people are willing participants. These are people that sit here and allow themselves to be used. And that's what the devil do. He looks to find who he can get in, who he can use. Y'all remember that movie with Denzel Washington had that spirit going around getting in folk? He'll bump. Then he got it, then bumped him and he realized he couldn't get in him. Got to resist. Paul, you remember that? Paul, while he just walked, bump, boom, boom, in a move, keep shape. That's how they work in your house, in your family. That devil keeps shift shaped. You think, oh, I got to keep my eyes on her. You bumped her, boom, she got it. She bumped. I'm still watching you. Hell, I don't miss it. That's how quick it moving. That joker just constantly jumping from family member to family, just working, just using. And he know you're stupid. Your eyes stuck on one, you don't realize it's all of them. Hmm? And you know what that devil saying? He using you. Time is on my side. Yes, it is. You know why it's on his side? Because it's running out for you. You can't afford to be stupid one more time. You can't afford to play like you don't understand. You can't comprehend. I got questions. I don't know what's going on. You know exactly what you're doing. You know one time I felt bad for a fella one time. He ain't going to believe when. I, could, I was more angry at the guy than I was because I looked at the guy's condition and the fact he sat there and questioned. The joker had fallen down the step. He told that nigga about that falling down the step. That stuff wasn't going to work. The rent was due. I was like, how you... The man done fell down the steps, and you worry about the rent, but you don't realize he do this every month. After the rent pay, they don't fall. It's whenever something coming up, all of a sudden they fall down the step. Now they can't do what they need to do. Now something going on. I can't hardly think. I can't focus every time the rent do. A holiday coming up. boo loo 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 I got credit. Blue, 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 blue. After that, they good. This stuff not moving me no more. You know what's gonna move me? Y'all behind finna get this book right here. If I got to beat you to get it, whatever I need to do. I need to put you in a coma, whatever you need. All of us in here, y'all done gave us something. Y'all behind finna get in line. We gotta get in. Now you can be sitting here playing y'all want to. The man calling you now to get it right. Y'all can play stupid all you want to, but your ass is going to hell. That's reality now. You got on the right uniform, you got the right behavior. You keep going getting dressed right. These folks dress you make a fool out of you every time. Man, some stuff, if we had time, I could show time gonna fit. But it's still right though. See, we need that ass and damn hell back on the table more for you. See, now you start to wake up, now you were sleeping. You start thinking, oh hell, he might slap my ass. And I might wind up going to hell. See, we need to get you back on point now. Don't lose now. But I need to make sure we get the fundamentals. Y'all hear me? What's in point? Getting that heart right. That inner man. Getting that soul. Getting your behind where you got to be. Mm. I'll bring two and one. I ain't going to let y'all go. This is a beautiful way. Listen. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. Less. At any time, we should let them slip. That's amazing. For? If the dabari spoken by Malachi was steadfast. Yeah. And every transgression and disobedience. I wonder what he told about make no lead with them. Quick, tear down their altars and destroy their stuff. Make no covenant with these people. Didn't Malachi tell us that? Well, if, every, if the word spoken by Malachi 
was stead what? Was steadfast. If it don't change. And if every transgression. That's a transgression. And disobedience. I just disobeyed. Did what? Received a sadak recompense of reward. You ain't gonna believe what he's gonna tell you next. How shall we escape? Uh oh. You know what he done told the people come to kill us? Come to kill you? Life for life. If anybody get through, life for life. What you think somebody's gonna do? How that matter key gonna tell my Leon gonna run? The man just told me if anybody get through, it's gonna be life for life. I gotta get you. I gotta get you. Think how, think how you done set it up where they got to kill you. Even if you seen somebody coming out with their kid, you're like, man, that's a mother and a kid. Life for life. Any one you catch on with ball clothes, kill them. Any one you don't caught that been in that temple, kill them. Go through the temple, slay every one of them, kill them. Every one of them. Now, why would we be stupid enough to put ourselves in this situation? He's asking, how are we going to escape? Why would this don't even make sense unless I consider this? Life for life. Life for life. How should we escape if we neglect? So great salvation. Which at the first began to be spoken by Yahuwah. And was confirmed unto us. By them that heard him. What did Allahim do? Allahim also bearing them witness. Both? Both with signs and wonders and with divers miracles and gifts of the Ruach HaKudash, according to his own will. That's what we got to look at. That ain't all the stuff we got going on. I got folks in here can get well, and get well enough to play basketball, miss service, get well enough to go fishing, miss service. Y'all got a lot going on in here. I'm trying to figure out how y'all must up the strength to go ahead and play basketball and play, and now I'm saying you can't make my service. How y'all must up the time y'all finna go fishing and y'all must up time that you miss service? Now, where your heart's at? I don't, let me tell you something. Let me just be flat here about him. I don't give a damn what you got going on. All I care about is your ass getting saved. Now, I done told y'all, y'all need to be friends and be real with each other. I can care less about what you got going on, your mental issue, your non-focus, your headache, your damn back, your ass, or your feet. What I care about is you getting where you need to be. I put a lot of time up him. Now, I'm trying to talk tonight. You want to fight me? Now, we got to get this right. This is, our, this is our souls on the line. Now, you get it right or you just don't go to hell. It's stupid. Everybody here, get it right. It's stupid. Stupid. Everybody got something going on. Focus your behind and get saved. Right. At the end of the day, ain't nothing going to change. What you going to succumb to going to change? Nothing. What you want a pity party? Nobody kissing your ass. Right. Right. You get up and do what you're supposed to do. Right. Petting and stroking none of y'all asses. Right. You want to be saved, get up and do it. Nobody don't pet me. Nobody don't tote me. Nobody don't come rub me to do what I got to do. I'm obligated to be. I want to be here. Folks, I do their thing willingly. I make me get up and do nothing. One time I get on my head ringing and hurt. And that's a job. Still got to get done. Don't matter. I stir around for a while. I finally get it while I get my set together. So I got to go. I got to make it work. Y'all hear me? In the day, do it. He already let me know. I can replace your ass. Which one is it? Ain't nobody doing that you can't be replaced. You ain't sitting in no seat, nobody else ain't sitting in. Hmm? Talking about your husband and your wife. Your ass be dead. Somebody be somebody else's husband, somebody else's wife. You're for waiting on people to die now. Tell these folks, tell them that keep being stupid. They don't realize it. It is. If folks sitting there telling them, anytime you feel like it, just come on by. Tell they tell they say, you, even if you don't stay long, just kill that bastard and keep moving. If I'm trying to tell you now. At one time, it wasn't like that. But time got a way of looking at it. This ain't your mind. You ain't trying to do it. I need you gone. I want somebody ready to do what got to be done. I'm trying to make it in. Right. Y'all, I'm just being honest. You can be, even, I can be, everybody can be replaced. Y'all hear me? 
This boy ain't special for me. My ass gone. Somebody will be you to keep right. They ain't going to be stopping. Ain't nobody doing nothing. You can't be replaced. You hear me? Get your behind in line. Get where you got to be and get your behind faithful. They were right here. I like that. But that ass damn in hell just kind of brings something out of you. This being nice stuff ain't working too well for me. I've been too nice, ain't it? Hmm? People thought I done went soft, ain't it? They think I done got soft, ain't it? <laughs> they think my name done changed the pudding. <laughs> I love y'all. Every one of y'all in here. Y'all hear me? All I'm telling every one of y'all in here, I wouldn't say what I say if I ain't love you. I wouldn't call it Moses, Belinda, Megan, every one of y'all in here. I love it. Daryl, I love every one of y'all. I wouldn't call y'all if I ain't love you. My intent to try to destroy you, make you fall, if that my intent ought to go to hell. Y'all hear me? If I'm sitting here willing to sit here and drag y'all somewhere and make y'all go to hell on purpose, I ought to go to hell. Huh? An excuse? I ain't got no excuse. Nobody in here got no done excuse. Everybody in here got to come up to the door. Rudy, same thing. Come up to the mall. Beasley? Isn't that right? I don't call y'all names. They, I know people, he call, he embarrassed. Yeah, you know what part embarrassed? He's trying to get y'all to get to where y'all got to be. I can sit back and let you go and go to hell. Days out, days out. Do what you do. Don't show up and go because the rest of the people ain't going to say nothing to you. Everybody will worry about offending and falling out with you. Hell, fall out with me. You don't pay my bills. But if I don't tell you, my ass going to hell. So I got that job that other people don't want. That's why I tell you about some of these peer group breakers, because people ain't going to challenge you. That's why y'all get in a group where people ain't going to challenge you. That's why you don't never move up. You ain't being persuaded. You ain't being challenged to want to come up higher. People say they take it at your lower point and let you stay and you get How do you get worse? You ought to be getting better. It won't be with people challenge you to do better. Zach, too, I call him out, too. Slow ass. He ain't no fast runner. Got a good heart. He just been in his own world. Most of y'all, you know, some of y'all danger. Some of y'all danger is your own peer group and the other groups you got. Some of y'all are danger yourself. Being by yourself is a danger. You don't need to be by yourself. You need to be with somebody. You need somebody to challenge you and tell you what it is. You'll be all right. You don't be. Don't be nobody. Don't tell you the truth. That said, let you keep going. Texting me. Did somebody? Do don't tell me. Tell them. I make it better. Why you tell them? You tell them because you're trying to set them up? You're trying to melt? tell them because you love them. So I'm going to tell you because I love you. You don't take it. That's on you. Now do what you want to do at that point. You going to see going out there. I got an ex member going out there. Watch me now. You know what she told me? She said, you messed me up. She said, you told me too. She said, we ain't going to find that out there. She said, ain't nothing. Something messed. I can't go nowhere. She said, either the preacher trying to sleep with you or they gay. She told me. She said, why? She said, you told her. She said, you called it. You said it. We ain't going to be able to go nowhere. Say, no way. I'm talk, go ahead and leave and see for y'all self. He don't go nowhere. Y'all sat there and be a liar and a hypocrite to fit in with him. I like being just like that. I can look at one of y'all square in the face and I can tell you flat-footed. That's how I like it. Take it and eat it. I appreciate Brother Lancaster. He came back. He said, I appreciate it. Talking about me checking my phone. But I appreciate it. That's how we got to be. Other folks, you know what we do? We all bad about it. Calls it. How they going to help somebody? I, ain't gonna lie. I do like talking behind your back, too. But I like to tell you, too. First, I like to say it didn't come tell you. That's just me. I like to hear it both ways. I like it both ways. But I don't go just say that and don't tell you, though. You need to know it. Oh, it ain't going to help. Yeah, yeah, man, Cam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Cam need to hear it. Now let go tell Cam. I said, y'all said and said it again. Now he know it. Then when he comes in, he'll be all right. That's how we got to be. Be real. Help each other. Isn't that right? If y'all on drugs, hell run. And fending me anything, let folk know. Anybody in him. If you don't fail the drug test, just let us know. All we can do is get help. Care, do you know anybody? Rudy? I mean, no, do anybody know anybody? Josh, do you know anybody? Roger, do you know anybody? Rudy, do you know anybody that we can talk to that can help, that we can get help? <laughs> I didn't mess with them. But where else you going to go? We, we love each other. At the end of the day, whatever you do, make sure it's out of love and you care for each other. You ain't going to always feel your best, but you got to come up. 
there I get you excited. You got good songs, but I get you excited. Get you back on board. We just be losing. Some of y'all just be dazing out and phasing out. Man, that's the best thing ever happened. Like, yeah, it costs us some stuff. But at the end of the day, I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the reward. I've told y'all over and over, you can't ever let the labor get greater than the reward, or you're going to think. It get hard, but what's the reward? I ain't going to have to cry always. I ain't going to be sick always. I ain't going to be dying always. It's, got, it's a better hope in what we're doing. Y'all start making everything fat out like this is the worst thing. I ain't going to get no better. That's crazy. I'm only suffering because of what I believe. I don't have to suffer if I do like the other, be like the other, be hypocrites. They don't even get along with each other. The same people that gather up on you run their mouth on each other. They ain't even like they got no real league with each other. And we trying to kiss their asses. I would be a fool that real. Tell me like it is. Hmm? Tell like the man told Rachel. He said, Ray, I'm going to tell you something. I don't want you to take it wrong. He said, well, tell it to me right. I can't take it wrong. He said, I don't want you to take it wrong. He said, well, tell it to me right. Isn't that right? Yeah. And we grow and we give it. Look at like Abraham. That, that damn ketchup stuff. We ain't going to never let that go. But we love him. Collagulated blood <laughs> and more cocaine. <laughs> but don't we love him? We just gonna be honest. It might hit you, but then we gonna let me ain't there sneaking all behind nobody back. Tell what we can help him. That catch up gotta be loose. Them souls in them bottles. <laughs> and they can be heard in the factory. <laughs> And then, I love you. I want every one of us to make it at whatever a cost, whatever we got to do, whatever we got to get up, whatever we got to forsake, whatever we got to do, don't make it too much that you don't do it. That's good.